Welcome into the Camister Podcast, episode number 201. My stomach hurts, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, dude, you got to take care of that. Man, man, it, it, my stomach, my stomach kind of hurts, Can Andy. You, nobody wants to hear about it either. Well, I'm just letting you know, like, we're kind of caught in a jam out here. Like, it's, it's nothing worse than having to go to the bathroom. And, like, I know living in Jersey, that's even more difficult to get off of, like, Highway 280 and go to one of those shithole gas stations in Jersey. They're not like the badass gas stations we have out in the Midwest, Andy. We got road rangers. Are these stuff badass like that. gas the stations The gas stations, out here? if you have to go to the bathroom in Jersey or New York, man, like, you're you're going to have to hold it. Mm-hmm. There's, there's nowhere to really go. Yeah. There's, you know, God dang, though. You know. I drink too much coffee in the morning, me, Andy. Let me just share something for uh, people. By the way, uh... The Camister Podcast is brought to you by Hair Club, baby. Oh, yeah. As yeah, always, men and women. Restore, regrow, replace that hair and do it. Now, I don't know what you're waiting for. Don't even wait for it. Um, you know, one thing, Cam, I'll share this little piece of advice for you. It's actually a little secret. It's a tricky secret if you want to know it. What, don't eat? Well, no. I would, uh, if I got to go on the road, I find I find the nearest, nicest hotel you yeah. can find. yeah. You go to the Ritz Carlton, they give you your own little stall. Like it's like it's carpeted. It's, it's nice. very nice in there. No one's in there. It smells like roses. You cannot listen. We, we we got a brand to uphold here. We know people inside this building. In fact, I just paid the rent today. I don't need the rent Man. you know going up. You don't need to be using the restroom on I this floor. Go to a different I'm floor. I'm weird, man, with that. I don't like to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't fart in front of people. Okay. I only fart no. in front of Kate. Really? I swear to God, I don't okay. do it. I know. Yeah. I'm kind of like that, too. I don't like doing that in front yeah. of people. I was, I was so grossed out for so uh-huh. long, being with 20 swinging dicks every single fucking day, mm-hmm. on bus rides, yeah. shitting all over the place. Guys would, like, shit right after each other in a locker room. No, no problem whatsoever no problem. doing it. They'd read the same... They, it would be just one stench... Pick up the same magazine, into the newspaper. One guy after another and go walking into filth... Or I will go into the underbelly of the mm-hmm. rink and find a women's A women's bathroom. Oh, I've done that, too. I ain't playing. Oh, I've done that, too. I don't give a damn. I told I you back in the day when I used to work the overnights, I used to I'm, always use the women's bathroom. I'm not messing around with that. It's At disgusting. Calf Country, I'll give Calf Country a shout-out. Arizona's number one country station back when I used to work there. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 absolutely. Now, I drink coffee. I've been drinking coffee on a on a daily basis. I can probably count on one hand if I've ever missed a day of not having coffee in the last 20 plus years. I mean, I drink coffee every day. I'm like a lot of people out there. But lately, the coffee has just been absolutely destroying my uh, oh, my stomach. Oh, God, man. And I don't know what it is. My wife bought a new little uh, coffee jar. You know, I used to always keep the jar in the, uh, or the coffee in the bag. We've got the coffee grinder. Uh, I like to put the beans in there, grind the coffee. Oh, you go old school, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like, I like the coffee grinder, yeah. It smells 10 times better, uh, it man. It smells so it much does. better. And we listen, I am a coffee snob. I will buy nice yeah, coffee. Me too. Um, now she likes to grind the coffee and then put it in this little jar that she got that says coffee on it. Well, that's cute. Okay. No, 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 no. So I feel like there's like extra... Um, Acidity or something that's just, it's just tearing my stomach up. Nothing to do with anything, Andy. Well, yes, it does. Nothing to do with anything. Well, what do you think it is? Because it's I just killing know. me. So, what do I do instead of coffee? Can, do I quit tea? coffee? Try tea, man. Can't do that. Well, you haven't tried it. Black tea's pretty um, damn good for you. It is. But you still have to go to the bathroom on that, too, man. It's It, it flushes your system out. Hey, listen, uh, I really? love the fact checkers <laughs> out there, my people in Saskatchewan, everywhere. And they send me all the things that you say wrong every single week. Uh, it's quite amazing. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I speak, it's Lake St. Croix or something like no, that. It, or St. Clair. Uh, not Lake Ontario right there? Lake St. Clair. Oh, it is right there? Yeah, Saint okay, Clair. so yeah. Yeah. Oh, gee, sorry about you that. You were wrong about that. Sorry about that, Andy. You know, if we listen to you talk the whole time, we wouldn't learn anything. So, like, sometimes <laughs> I am right. Well, I, have you, a lot, I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say. And please do correct me. Like, I don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. I will tell you a weird, horrible, most embarrassing story ever, though. Oh, God. Is this a recent story? No, but this, you know, you know how I used to piss to bed, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, my God. They brought this up. My daughter's going to sixth oh. grade camp. Oh. And they brought it up in front of all the parents. That what? We had a parent meeting. That they pissed to bed? They said if there's anybody out there that has a child who bedwets, it's okay. Here's what we do in the situation. When the kids all go and brush their teeth and shower, they change the sheets. Nobody even knows. And if anybody has that issue, to go ahead and let us know beforehand so we can mark it down Listen and we're me. aware of it. It's Listen like, oh, me. my God. I'm a shit-kicking some bitch. How old were you when you're wet in the bed? I'm a shit-kicking some bitch. But I pissed a bed to a late age. And it was fucking embarrassing. Give me the age. I think I was about to play AAA hockey. Oh, my God. I think so. That's like now, 11, let me give 12. You, this is where my mom and dad are just so cool. Like, I remember being at 
a friend's house who had older sisters and their friends being there. And you, when you're 11, 12 years old, like you're nervous around girls that are older than you. You don't have any fucking confidence. You have nothing, right? You know, you're just, you're just there. You're just a 12-year-old kid that's mm. younger. You're more nervous then than you would have been at like 17, 18, 19? No, I, I was crushing cats at 17, banging 40-year-old women in Windsor. I'm talking, talking about like about? older cool women, though. No, no, no. Just, yeah, dude, I'm 20. You don't know what I'm saying. Let me, let me talk because okay, you're just... You, 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 you just, you, you, you don't we'll know see if this makes sense. Let me tell you about me pissing a damn bed. I'm, I'm trying to be self-deprecating here. So my, I'd have to be, I'd be at my buddy's house spending the night. And I'd sleep, I'd fall, I knew this was going to happen. And I just, I, you know, sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it does. I'm falling asleep in their goddamn reclining chair. And I fall asleep and I piss all over oh my their God. $1,000 recliner. It's a recliner. That, 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 yeah. that stained it. It stained it. <laughs> and I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning like, <gasps> oh, God. I'm like, oh, God. And I'm like, piss all over the place. I'm like, oh, God. And everybody's sleeping. I'm like, oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? And the girls are sleeping in a different room. Like, if they came out here and saw, I pissed over their fucking recliner. I, I got to get out of here. So I call my dad to pick did me up. Did you tell the, the parents? No. no. I houdini did. My dad picked What me. did you say? You had to leave? I just, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. They didn't even know I left. Dude, you so, pissed and ran? Yes. That's terrible to oh, do. Oh, pissed all over the recliner. Called my dad. I go, get me now. He got up at 3 o'clock in the morning, drove 12 miles, picked me up. We houdini it. Got back to the house. Did you tell them what happened? Well, the next day they woke up and they saw a surprise on their twelve hundred. Dude, I would recliner. never sit on the couch at your house. I didn't mean. I don't piss or in bed the now. Chair. I talk about when you were a kid, like going well, over no to your shit. house. I'm not sitting on your recliner, man. And I, I had dude, like so that that was, that was like that was hardcore as a kid, like mm. dealing with that. How do you, you deal know? with that? Houdini it. No, like, know? how do you feel about it now? Do you oh, feel, like, better about it? No, I haven't, you know. Did it, you have uh, any issues that lingered throughout the course? Well, I felt like afterwards, like, you better become a man or something. You better do something, because this ain't going this that happens? well. Why do you think happens? Like, why do kids, like, uh, wet because the bed, I just, you think? I dream, I just, I would dream that I was going to the bathroom, I'd just do it, I think. Oh, is that what happened? But it didn't, didn't it just went away. Mm -hmm. I had a speech impediment, Andy, when I was young. Did you? I couldn't say R. Andy Strickland. That's what I would say. I know. No, that's I'm like okay. A, that's okay. I'm I know lots of Andy kids Andy Strickland. Like that. Uh -huh. and, and so I, I had that going. I pissed the bed. And like I said, shit going. I didn't figure shit out. Like mm -hmm. I, and all of a sudden that stopped. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the piss the bed stopped. Yeah. And then I became a shit kicker. Okay, so what age do you think this stopped? I, I want to know the, what The age speech this impediment was. was young. I was younger I'm not going to chirp you for that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I couldn't I would help never it. chirp anybody for a speech it impediment. Was, it was embarrassing as a kid. Like, Pissing the bed at 12, oh, 13. Oh, Jesus, I Murphy. Know. I don't know about I that. I know. Although some kids deal with that, man. I mean, after going to the parent meeting, I understand. I don't know if I was 12. I Andy. felt like they talked about it way too long. We, we could have moved on. And listen, any parent out there, if you're sending your kid to a camp, and your kid wets the bed, yeah, you just I reach know. out on your own. Yeah, yeah You reach yeah. out on your own. I don't think this is something we have to talk about as a group. I know. And you know what? Don't embarrass your kids either. Like, yeah. I hate when I hate when parents embarrass their kids in front of another other adults or other kids that might be older. Mm -hmm. If you have your buddies over and your dad's like, fuck you, I can, what are you nerds doing in the backyard? Like, that's fine. I but know, if you have girls over, somebody, don't you ever do that to Tyler, no, listen, or I'll I be would, so pissed I would at you. I never. But I I'll know so parents, when I was a kid, Cam, or even I know parents as an adult, like if they don't know where their kid is, like if their kid calls or doesn't call, they will show up to where all the kids are hanging out, create a big scene. Oh, yeah. And like they'll drag their kid out of there. And that, yeah, that, that'll, depends on what it is. No, that'll scar a kid for life. When you embarrass your kid in front of their peers, I don't think they ever get over, I don't think they ever get over that. It depends on what they're doing, Andy. If your kids if they're having wait, ice cream at an ice cream that's shop, that's a difference. No, no, no. After but, a school function, oh, that's what you and your buddies probably did. Well, I remember what I used to do after school. In grade school, dude. In grade school, what, loitering. You're always into mischief. You're looking through stuff. You're doing that. Yeah, like we were fucking, you know, doing no, shit. I'm saying, like, so if, if you my, had a school function, everybody would just, you know, go to. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. And the crazy mom, or if you're at oh, your friend's no. house okay. and she's banging on the door, she's calling left and right. I and know. the parents who are hosting the event are like sleeping, and like all the kids are asleep downstairs, and you're freaking oh, out. Who because the hell does I, that? Oh my god! I really? saw it several times. And those kids have no relationship with their parents. Oh right? man, you know the kids I used to hang out with, their mom and dad were so. My parents were lenient. You guys all know that. They're probably too lenient and figured it out. It's all good, but. It's the kids that we that were really strict, they just rebel. I mean, mm. they fucking rebel. So I would do That's crazy stuff, do. but I still knew I had to respect my parents because they let me do what I wanted. And if I went over the line, like I'm, I don't need to go over the line because they let me do enough. I don't think the uh, that the motive or the idea here is just to like let your kids do whatever no, you want. Of course, I'm not, not. I'm not suggesting that. 
But, but I'm suggesting you got to understand the circumstances and the potential long-term effects and implications that you could create in terms of your relationship with your kid when you embarrass your kid in front of their peers when they're not doing anything wrong. Yeah, dude. Well, if they're not doing anything wrong, then you're an idiot. And all they're trying to do is have a social life and and have friends. I know. And but you're the crazy parent, again, dude. Again, though, if it's your buddies and they yell at you in front of your buddies, who cares? If you're around girls at a younger age and your dad yells, your mom yells at you in front of you, and then you're like, why the fuck would you do that in mm-hmm. front of these girls? Like, just just wait till they're gone and then ream me out when they're gone. I don't give a shit about my buddies. Who cares? What you do in front of girls, like, that scars you, in my opinion. Listen, my my daughter is now in the first year of middle school. Oh, I told you, like, boy. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, like, growing up for the second time over again. Like, just, like, everything that she's dealing with. So, on Fridays after school, they all walk to, like, this, this local establishment, and they're all hanging out. So, I had to go pick her up, and, dude, there's, like, 300 kids out there, and they're all what just... What were they doing? Just hanging out. Were they like, around. Were there kids Boys kissing each other and, and stuff? I'm sure like some of the older middle school kids, you never know what they're doing. At sixth grade, were we making out with chicks? She we, told me that there was a high school kid that came up and they like, almost got in a fight with one. I don't know. Don't, oh, whatever. I mean, some yeah, of that crazy don't be, stuff. Don't, don't, well, yeah. I'm just saying some of that is going on too. Christ, well, whatever. I, I, Going to a public school, what do you expect? Yeah, well, I know. I know. That's what it'll do. You're out there. She's going to be okay. <laughs> Come on, Andy. You grew up at Parkway. Don't act like you're a fancy lad. Parkway, might be a, dude, was like hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. You grew up in a hardcore school. Very Hell hardcore. Yeah, you did. Very hardcore. Probably got bullied around a little bit, Never too. Never got bullied, you man. Probably, I needed, you probably needed me I around. I was the class clown, dude. I, well, I, I always had one of you around, honestly, at you all times. Have a, you got to oh, have, oh, a, yeah. you gotta have had, somebody. I always had one of you. But, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I just well, I, it, was, it was hardcore, but I feel like I'm better off because of it now, to be honest. Yeah, man. You know, I, you kind of learn a little bit. You learn about different people. Well, we had city Not everybody kids. looks the same and talks the same and yeah. acts the same and all that. We had black kids. We had white kids. We had rich kids. We had poor kids. We had Hoosiers. We had this. We had that. We had a little bit about it, a little bit of everything, man. We it's had like drugs. My neighborhood had right now is very multicultural <laughs> in my neighborhood right now. Yeah, it is. Although Praveen, man, his yard is just going to shit. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. He needs to get his yard going. No, a lot not, of my neighbors are not taking care division. of their yard right now. It's kind of bothering me. Doesn't happen to my side. I become that person. Well, yeah, because it makes your yard look like shit. You know what I became like yesterday? I, Ty was watching some bullshit on uh, YouTube, and I, I, I become that like man. I was like, hey, dude, turn that shit off. So I am. I, so I was like, about? now I become that dad. So I'm what? Like, Tell I'm him like, to turn it off. Turn it off. Why would you not like, say? Why that? are you watching that? Why would you not say that to him? Who cares? I know. Was he just, watching it too much? If he's watching it too much, tell him to turn it off. If he's yeah. not and he just got done doing his thing, he wants to watch a little YouTube. I'm on YouTube every damn day because I watch interesting shit. I like I like interesting shit. I like seeing in Texas there's a drought and they found those anim- uh, dinosaur tracks from 130 million years ago. I like how we're going back to the moon, Andy. We're going to go back to the moon down in Cape Canaveral, but then something broke on that fucking thing. But I will say this. Anytime, and we haven't been to the moon in a while. I think China went to the moon like a, like a decade ago. I don't know. We kind of forgot about it. It hasn't happened for a while because of a couple things that happened, Andy. Back in fucking 80s, NASA was kicking out fucking launches oh, yeah. five times a goddamn month. Yeah. And they just kept doing it, kept pushing the line, kept because they got all this mon- yeah. money, funded money. They kept pushing it, kept pushing it. And then you build up the Challenger. That was in 85. 88. You build up no, the ch- 86. 80, 85. Whatever. You build up the Challenger, and you have this woman, first teacher go, yeah. and you build it up, and everybody's watching the it. The first woman the to first, go. I think it was the first teacher. I think it, I was, think it was the, the first, first teacher. woman. She's I don't a, think they classified you by your career. I mean, you couldn't just be like a welder and say, I'm going to go up No, no, no. Time. They wanted to pick a teacher to be able to talk to the but kids. She it's trained like, it. This was like a big no, story I know. leading up to it. Yeah. I know. So it was a huge story. Yeah. And everybody's pumped up, and yeah. they kept pushing. They wanted, watched it in school, dude. Dude. Yeah, homie, I know. Were you gathered around? No, man, I was two too? years old, dude. No, no, no. Yeah, I was a little no. older. Than yeah, you're, you you're fifteen. Two years old. No, I just know things because I go back and look at historical. I watched it in school. I know and you, you did. Saw this like nine eleven. Blow up. It was like I mean, a nine eleven. Like, oh thing. my god! That's what I'm saying. So they fucking rushed this thing. They pumped it up. Everybody's like, and all of a sudden they push it. It's twenty six degrees outside in Florida, freezing cold. The O rings are frozen. Twenty six degrees in Florida. It was freezing cold that night in Florida. Freezing cold, and they wanted to get this. They wanted to get the launch off. They wanted to get it off. They wanted to get it off because they're pressured, pressured money. Da, 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 da. They got to have a time schedule, so they wanted to get out. They rushed it, and they had the past couple flights had O ring problems. The seal when you connect everything together, mm-hmm. you put those little rubber O rings on, mm-hmm. 
and they started failing under hot temperature. And they knew that, and they had it in the data, and they didn't say anything because they wanted to rush it. And all of a sudden, you have these shitty they O-rings. They know that it could, they could, knew it. It could cause a... Yes, because it was almost there. And it, so, But it's 26 degrees. You're talking about if the engine gets too hot. No, right? there's just a lot. Listen, there's a lot of components to go. I'm, I'm just simplifying everything for everybody, okay? So there's an O-ring problem. They kind of knew about it. And once you tack on cold weather... Plus the shitty O rings, the combination, the combination, mm-hmm. and they rushed it because they had to get it out. Yeah. We got the woman. We got to go. No, and they explode, fucking rushed man. it, and it went up. You ever take a hot glass and then put cold water into it? No, I, what, I, what will happen? It'll I, break. You know, I, I, I don't know, know if you ever done. But that. the point is, the video of the families watching it, and oh. they go, and they go, oh, God, and all of a sudden it breaks apart, and they're like, "That's just a, that's a, that's the booster." What? Huh? That's not supposed. Really? That's not You've supposed seen to happen. That video? Yes. There's a whole. Go on Netflix. They'll, they'll take. They'll go step by step through the whole process. Is there a documentary it's of it? It's unbelievable. Hell yeah! I'll check that out. Check that mug out. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And they and the people and the reaction. So my point is, the tightest in the boat is when anytime I watch a launch like that, I get scared. Too. I go, it's gonna. How can I not think Don't that way? Think that way. How can I not? There's oh, not gotta, that many launches anymore. That, well, my point is, there's not that many launches that I watch anymore. So when you do finally watch one, they're going mm-hmm. to the fucking moon. It broke down. That's what I think. I think of the goddamn Challenger. Now, re-entry point. What do I think of? The re-entry. They take off. They go cruise around. They come back. What am I thinking of then? The Columbia. 2002. Oh, oh my I God, know. You're thinking of that one too. Yes. Yeah, so finally they regroup and they go into Columbia to go out. They go out successful trip. I feel like they're going up there way more than people know. Well, uh, no, not they, anymore. That was shut down. No, they for a send bit. like, uh, hey, after like these, Michael Strahan and people uh, like that can no, just go that's, on. No, that's, they go up there too. Andy, Andy, that is a completely different thing. That's, what that's Richard doing? Bronson. That's Richard Bronson. They're going to go up there for, for $500,000. You see a little bit of the thing and you come back down. Things can go bad with the that dude too. dude from uh, Richard Bronson. From, uh, is it 48 Hours or whatever, or uh, that, that, that scary show where he was the voiceover guy? He was in Star Wars and, or, or, or uh, Star and. Trek. You know the show Star Trek? Oh, you're talking about... Uh, the main guy. Yeah, the guy that everybody hates. Uh, no. No, I know. He's, on all- he's got that voice. Yes, He's I know. way older than people realize. Um, yeah, I know. He's supposed to be a dick. People hate him. Anyway, the point is... The guy from Star Trek? Yes. Well, don't tell me that. I don't, I don't want to hear well, that. Why don't but you he, do research he, on things? He, and... boy, he was the voiceover of like a What's very name? scary show that was... No. no. The main guy the from main Star guy from... Trek. Come on, Spock. Or I don't know. Yeah, but Cam, Cam, he went up in a... Uh, yeah. In a... Uh, in a uh, oh, what... No. What's the guy's character? And tell me what other Come show on. that William he's done. Shatner. William, William Shatner. Shatner. He's supposed to be a dick. So you know. He creeped people out. People fucking hated him. He was, uh, Jesus, he, Andy. He was the product yeah. of um, one of those comedy uh, central roasts. Yeah, I know. I know. Those <laughs> so are actually pretty William cool. Shatner pants or something like that. So <laughs> anyway, so anyway, the Columbia happened, and they go back into reentry, and it completely disintegrates, and it disintegrates all over Texas. And they're watching it come in like, there it is. Look, everybody, look. Same kind of thing, but it was reentry and explodes coming in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Too much pressure. Shit went down, and they were alive both times. The Columbia? The Columbia and the Challenger. What do you mean they're alive? They were alive. When it started and blowing up. Listen to me. They were alive until they hit the ocean. Well, they how were, do you die when you hit the ocean? Because impact, you goofball. They were alive. They have recordings of it. They don't have like life vests. So they didn't blow no, up. You can't like survive in the Listen water. Listen to me. They would, even the Challenger mm-hmm. when it exploded, mm-hmm. the the capsule they were in was protected, and they fell free fall fell, wow. and that's when they died. Okay, I wonder Isn't how that crazy. They look at that and then they say, "We we need to adjust in the event this happens again. How to make sure that well, they yeah. survive?" They, they had to so take like you, a ten year. Do? Well, they they stopped and said, "We're rushing this. We fucked up." How would you want to be on the next? Listen, a space people, shuttle that goes up. Oh there, God! After the Challenger, after I know, Columbia. I know, but they did a lot of research and they chilled out a bit. Things kind of went into shit, mm-hmm. and I think they had to regroup, reboot everything. Mm-hmm. It scares everybody away. It's all about funding, Andy. Would you when ever want to do listen, this w- at the beginning? Don't when they I, go up in Teslas now? L- they're trying. Yeah. Well, they're. Yeah, I don't know. L- look, there's a lot going on, but the point is like. No, no, no. Answer the question. Don't they go up? And yeah, t- and actually, it's a rocket that goes up and land itself. The, the back. guy who, Elon. In, yeah, Elon Musk, yeah, the richest okay, guy in the world. You understand who he world. is? Yeah. Is he is he is he more rich than our guy we're having on right now? I don't know. Yeah, he is about fifty billion times more rich. Okay. No, about hundred and thirty billion times more rich. Um, but yeah, he goes up and 
and, and they, they could, they could, a lot of them exploded space, uh, shuttle X, whatever you want to call it. But, um, SpaceX, I should say, but yeah, man, they just, they, people kind of got disinterested in NASA in the eighties. And so they brought this teacher on and then it blew up in their face literally. And, um, and then they had to regroup. So anyway, good luck to you guys going to the moon. I'll be watching. I'm just going to be a little freaked out. That's all. Yeah. It's actually very, That's all. very scary. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, would you ever go up in a shuttle? No, I, I have vertigo, Andy. I can barely even fly now. I can't do it. I can't look down. I don't want to look down. But you can I, go on roller coasters. It's a very I haven't been on strange. a fucking roller coaster. At, well, you, know, you said you would. 20, you said you Yeah, would. because I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to feel that. You know, I'm supposed to feel that. On a plane, you know, if I get freaked out, like, you're on a plane. I, I don't know. It's a weird It's a weird thing I have, guys. I, I know some people message me mm-hmm. about it, too. But sometimes when I'm driving over a bridge, I'm like, fuck, fuck. Hey, I'm Anxiety. going on a plane this week. And Where are you I, going? I'm going to Colorado. You know that. Oh, Labor Day right. weekend. Yeah. I'm going to go see a fish concert, but I'm taking the family. We're going to head you up to the mountains. might find some uh, mushrooms on that. <laughs> oh, you're going to be with the family? I'm and gonna, they're going to fish, too? Hold on. I'm going to take the family. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got a place up in the mountains for three nights. Oh, nice. Then we're going to come down because it's a long weekend. We're going to come down uh, on Sunday. And every year I meet up with a bunch of my friends. Um, we've been doing this for years. And a buddy of mine who lives in Denver, we're going to stay in his house Sunday night. My wife and kids stay back with his wife and kids and a bunch of the other kids. It's like 20 kids floating around there. And we all go to the show and whatever. And have a does good he have time. a big house? Because that's a yeah. lot of dudes. Well, only our family stay in there, but oh, he okay. does have a, he's got a good, good setup. Do you like staying with people in their houses? Because I don't. Okay, so here's the I'm deal. Lying, I don't mind it, but when you have your family with you, it's, it's, I know. it's not something that you love doing. Okay? Yeah. It's, so I'd, I'd prefer not to. But for one night... That's not bad. And it's a really close friend of mine. It's like, it's all good. We've stayed at their house several times. But still, no. Like, would I want to stay there for four or five nights in a row? No. I don't like to stay at even, people's house. Even you know? going on trips, Cam, where you, like, multiple families get a place together. I, I don't really do it. And you got to, like, all hang. You got to, like. Andy, I don't do it's it. It's tough. I don't do it. I, I am I'm so. I'm much I, better at that than my wife is at in <laughs> integrating with a lot of people. I don't like doing it. I like my own setup. Anytime I go anywhere with people, Kate and I would always get our own setup. Always mm-hmm. kind of get away from no, people. I need my own room. My I own need to do my back kind of thing. Yeah. I don't want people listening to me. I don't want people coming to my room unless it's my bed. What are they I mean. hearing you doing? Well, I don't want any taking a dump. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, whatever. Oh my god, making in their sweet, house. Making oh my god, you cannot do oh, that in god, their I got, house. I've done that before too. Oh Jesus, Murphy, Lord. And you're like coming out like, hey, do you have a plunger? I remember no, you're asking for being a on painkillers. Yeah, so you had bad. to do that, didn't you? I remember, Andy, I remember being on painkillers so bad where I didn't shit for like three days. And I was at a girl's house and it had to happen. And it was like the worst feeling in the world. And I go, girl, I know I don't even know you that much. well. I got to use your bathroom and I might be in it's there. It's probably better that you didn't know her. I go, listen to me, girl. I got to use your bathroom. It's it's. I was about to leave, but it hit me so hard. And I'm like, it's coming. Because mm-hmm. you don't control it, homie. When you don't crap for three days and you're an athlete and you're eating a bunch of food, when it hits you, it's like you're going through birth in a horrid way. Ten, way it's the worst thing in the world. If you know, you know, you know. But I remember going to this girl, I'm like, I got And I, it was the most disgusting thing in the world. And it wouldn't go down. And I'm losing my mind in there. And I and she's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, sweating my ass off, like, ah, ah. Like, it, like, like, like when you're at Lululemon getting dressed, and all of a sudden they're like, they're like, uh, they're like uh, "Andy, are you okay with that size?" Like banging on the door. Are they looking at me like, in oh here? Oh my god! It was the most horrific thing in the world. <laughs> I finally had to like, it, God, I spilled. I tried to clog it. Stuff spilling everywhere. I ruined her apartment. Oh no! It oh, over, god. overflowed. God. <laughs> Dude, that is embarrassing. I think I still banged her that night. Just oh, to be completely honest. Oh, no, 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 I, t- I took a shower. But I, I'm just saying. I don't saying, think she got near you after It was that. the most horrific thing ever. Mm. Uh, ever. Mm. Oh, man. I had some nasty Man, People story. are going to start judging you now. They're going well, to look, they're I, look at you a little differently. Because I got addicted and I and things happened. Well, is that what happened? It was yeah. from the addiction. Well, yeah, Andy. You think that's normal not to crap for three days? It's because I took 50 painkillers. What do you expect? Some people can go a couple days. You're aloof to things. Some people can go a couple days. Yeah, I'm dead serious. Man. It was horrible. It was a horrible yeah. fucking thing. Dude. Did you explain that to her? Did she know the situation? Oh, she, was, she was in a weird state of mind at that it's point. It's like when I pulled over in Atlanta. In Atlanta ass. to try to find the hotel. I saw a hotel sign, and it ended up being like the most dangerous neighborhood in Atlanta. How about that dude from the Redskins? Or, I'm sorry, Carjacked. the Commanders. Carjacked. Oh, my God. Like, these fucking weirdos will, will literally rob you gunpoint, shoot you, kill you. Take your cell phone and make a phone call and get arrested a mile down so the road. So they found the guys? 
how can you not, man? These dipshits, they'll they'll literally kill you, and then for your cell phone and make a call, and they'll trace the call what, in two seconds. Which part of town was this guy hanging out in? I don't know. Like it's training camp, and he's a rookie. It's, a lot. it's DC, man. Yeah, yeah, but it's crime. training camp and he's a rookie. Normally, when you're a rookie in training camp in, you don't the, have a N- car. in the NFL, you no, don't have a car. You're like taking the bus, the yeah, shuttle. But he's back an Alabama and forth. kid. Oh, so he's already yeah. been in the NFL for like before no. he even got to the NFL. Yeah, Andy. he had money. <laughs> you know exactly right. He's I mean, in he's Alabama. got a car. He's doing what he wants. He Normally, you're staying in the dorms or whatever. I don't think yeah. they've been released to their homes yet. You know, I, I don't know. But the point is, man, like that now, like he got shot in the lake. Like he's gonna be okay. But he's never going to play football again, probably. Oh, really? And you get shot in the leg, like, dude. It's like, not life-threatening. I, I I just said that. But my point is, like, as far as, like, having your fucking jump and your your sprint and your mm. power after getting shot in the leg, yeah. like, you're gonna it's going to take you years. It's going to take a lot of speed off you. I want to know which dipshits. part of town he was in and why know, he was he, there. Right by, right by the Capitol. I don't know. Some of these kids, man, they grew up in such hardcore neighborhoods. Even when they make the money, they don't know. They don't want to, like leave the neighborhood. They feel guilty about leaving the neighborhood. Get out of there. That's why you do what you do to get the fuck away from those dipshits. There's always guys that you grow up with that you're just like, nah, I don't need you. I like the guys that, I like the, I told you, I, I always hung out with with the with the right group that I was a crazy one more than that. I wanted them to be like, no, Cam, let's not do that. Like, not that I, I was like that too. I didn't make stupid, stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I never hung out with guys that did. I would never, I don't care how fun they were. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't want you act doing, I don't want you driving me stupid. I don't want, you know, yeah. I want to always hang out with the kid that has that on the shoulder. That's like, no, let's stay yeah. away from this. Yeah, the good head on the, the shoulder. The good head. Now yeah. he can still party and mm-hmm. we have fun, mm-hmm. but I just know I'm, I'm safe with him. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, I know. Yeah. And in the business, you want to be that you way caught too. caught in the wrong car or whatever, you know? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, dude. You just get caught in the wrong situation. But know. or you know, but you you know when that group shows up to the party, whatever, and they're just you know, and it, it, but everybody's friends. But at the same time, there's a certain collection who are always in trouble. I don't like with the police and whatever, you know. That's why, like, uh, my dad always told me too, like, don't get into a fucking dipshit's car just because he wants to show off how fast it is. Mm-hmm. Don't you get in there? I don't give a shit how fast your car is. I'm not getting in that goddamn thing. I'm like, so you fucking show off, and we fucking, you know. Mm-hmm spin out and hit a slick and we die no Damn, way this coffee is just killing my stomach right now i don't know what's going on I with my know. stomach over here i need yeah. like a I need like a doc what do you need like a gi or something like i a, don't know like a, how about just don't drink coffee really i could never do that well then you're gonna deal with stomach aches mm. that's the way it is what's going on in the hockey world right now <sighs> i haven't talked hockey in four months on the radio show man like there's nothing not much going on like i don't know i like watching like Aaron Rodgers on Joe Rogan talking about what he he's had on the for. podcast tour right now. He yeah, did well, that he needs other, to he let did that other guy's podcast. Pat McAfee. He goes, no, 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 no. The other guy who's like, kind of like who he acts like he's really spiritual, but he's just making a ton of money, and he's I, I, I don't know that that one guy. He did a, a, a podcast like a week or two ago where he opened up about a lot of his shit. Oh, with the ayahuasca stuff. Was that was yeah. that a podcast he did that, or he just talked in the media? No, about it was that. a podcast. Huh. I yeah. don't know, but he, I don't care about the uh, Joe Rogan knows how to do an interview, and I just love how he breaks. I didn't everything listen down. to the whole interview. Did you? Did you? Not the whole one. It's three hours long. But um, is it? But he just talked about just fucking how he kind of battled with with the with the league about the COVID stuff, mm-hmm. and you know, like I like how all the media they know what's good for you, right? These little nerd boys that are overweight that never played a sport in their life are telling you how to take care of your body. Because they know more than you. You don't think Aaron fucking Rodgers knows what the fuck he's doing with his body? Has the right people around him? You think he's dumb? He might be arrogant. He ain't dumb. The media fucking treats you like shit if you can get him. He knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. He knows exactly what's going to his body. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt here getting bashed by the media. Are they getting for, bashed? Because of the vaccine things. Who's like, bashing t- them? What are you talking about? Getting- I'm not calling their names out. So no. Don't make me do that. But, but who's, who's getting bashed? Look, read the paper, Andy. Like, read the paper. I read the paper every morning. The newspaper writers the are new- bashing them? Yes, writers, everybody. People are bashing them. I can't believe that. How dare you be so... You don't think Nolan Arenado, $250 million guys that are the best athletes in the league, you don't think they know what the fuck's going on in their body? You're going you're gonna to bash them? You think they don't know how to make a decision? Get on with yourself. And now we know Now we know what we know about the vaccine? Come on. Now, 
I'm just saying, these guys know what they're doing. I don't care if you get it. I don't care if you don't get yeah, it. Yeah, that's But my, don't bash that, these million dollar, multi million, best athletes in the world. Like, they don't know what they're doing with their body. Mm -hmm. And you do? Who are you kidding? Who are you? How do you know? It's been wrong every step of the way. <laughs> so. Well, I don't know. I, I don't bash either side. I don't either, but I'm bashing what, the guys that do bash what you them. Gotta do. I'm bashing the media that bashes yeah. these like and the best athletes in the world. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, do to make a living and do your shit. You well, know? yeah, and sometimes you got to make a decision too. Like I don't need you to force me to do that. Yeah, it's easy, I don't want to get it's sick. Easy, you know, when you're making twenty, twenty five million bucks a year. Oh, listen! To, if I had to get the vaccine, yeah. Andy, to to work, I would. I would a hundred percent. I can't. I can't not make money. I'll roll the dice on that. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna force me to do it, and I'm already set, and I know it goes in yeah. my body. Like yeah. I don't know, it's just different. So what's his purpose of coming out and do? He seems angry. He seems like he's got a lot of uh, he's built pretty up cool. anger. Or something. I used no, to but not what like, is it? I like Aaron Rodgers. Well, but cool. what do you think it is, Andy? Why do you, everybody? Why do people go on any podcast? Like, they when, did, get when did he do that interview? Why don't like, you it's because, in the hardcore part of training camp. Is he doing it now, or did he do it before? I don't know. But um, but you sometimes you get there record straight you want to set it straight mm -hmm. on a great platform when you, you trust the guy that's going to ask, ask you questions you know he's going to ask you everything but he's trustworthy joe rogan like hell yeah like you're getting out there to 50 million people just like that that's why they do that set mm -hmm. the fucking story straight just like aaron Rodgers did he's a smart guy yeah he's arrogant his family don't like him i don't, I don't give a shit yeah he's a smart guy so he did this other podcast and got into a number of these topics too just yeah. like within the last couple of weeks listen he's a spiritual guy too man yeah. He, yeah. he's he's like i think his um his interest and hobbies and and you know just his overall learning process has like expanded over the course of the last few years. I think he's like you know experimented with different things and whatever. Yeah, man. Like you know? I don't, I, I'd go do a ayahuasca too. Fucking right. Or like, like sitting like a sweat lodge or something like that. Yeah, it's like you're in the middle of the jungle, and you just drink this syrupy stuff, and you just they control they. You might go. You want to go down the dark road first, so you have an option in your head when you're tripping. To go with the Satan, like a dark road, or the happy, you want to go dark first, get it all out of you, and then every mm -hmm. one other trips for the next four days when you're on there, they're all good. Then. You know, they're all happy because you have to get the demons out of you first. So you pick the, the dark, gloomy, scary-looking woods oh. instead of, like, Happyville over to the right. Yeah. You go down the dark path first, get it all out of you, and then the next trips are your mm -hmm. happy ecstasy, blah, blah, yeah. I love life. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think and, you have to do the ecstasy to... to no, 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 no. The ecstasy, f Jesus. <laughs> You're saying the, no, the actual. A, ecstasy is like a feeling. Yeah, the emotion. Yeah. 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 The feeling of ecstasy. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. You get confused easily, don't you, Andy? Well, no, I was just like, listening what to fuck, what you were saying. Man. Like, I, mean, we'll like to... I will do that. I don't know if I want to go to goddamn South America, you know. Is that where you had to go for that? I guess if you really want to do it right. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think guys went up to Machu Picchu, Andy. You know mm -hmm. what's up with that. Like, mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. Go up in the mountains and trip with ayahuasca. Oh, yeah. With the right well, people, uh, I'd do it. Well, do you get nervous going up on gondolas? Can you handle yourself on a gondola? I don't know. I When's the last it. time you've been on I, a gondola? When I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question, Andy. So I was on this gondola, this peak-to-peak -peak gondola. Did I tell you that? Up in British Columbia? Mm -mm. In Whistler? Where you go from one peak to the next? But there's nothing underneath you. It's not like you're like over a mountaintop or whatever. You're going from one peak, and then in the middle between the two peaks, it just drops like thousands of feet. So we're going from one peak to the next, and in the middle, I mean smack dab in the middle, it stops. And we're sitting there and just hanging, and this car that you're in is just rocking oh, back and forth. That. These are big cars, too. So it's not like just like a six or eight person like you're going to find like in Colorado, like in a normal like ski resort. So this, I think, could seat like 12 or 13. This one dude gets up, and he starts walking around on this thing. He's taking pictures, and he's making this thing uh, shake back and down. forth. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you got to sit down. Eventually, I always ask before I get on a gondola, I always ask the worker, hey, how long's the ride? And I start my watch, man. So I already looked it up, the gondola that we're going to be going up on. Where we're going, it's like a 13-minute ride, dude. Well, you could and also... You the longest look, 13 minutes You ever. could also look out the window and see where the, you know, where you're stopping, you know. Yeah, you don't do that. Not when you're looking down and it's like the Grand Canyon, what it looks like underneath. Is you. it closed in? Yeah. It's closed in. Oh, I don't like the chairlifts, where you're just like in an open chair, and you're I just know. sitting there. Well, like, so weird, like, there's some, uh, like, look at the lifts in the 70s. <laughs> it's like a oh mom with her two kids, and there's no, like, bar saving you. Cam, I went, uh, so where I went to college in Flagstaff, the ski resort there, the chair list, there's no bar. 
<sighs> Fuck. First time I was ever on a chairlift, and I had skis on, so my feet felt so heavy. I thought I was going to fall out of that thing. That's when I first developed the fear of heights. Dude, I never had it my whole life. Oh, until I got that. it. I got that. I got the fear of heights, man. Mm-hmm. I got the fear of heights, and it's it's not, and it totally affects my way of thinking on airplanes. I just I put myself in a, a state of anxiety so bad, and it's hard to control. And mm-hmm. I've always been like strong willed. Like if I need to get out of something, I can do it. Mm-hmm. Man, this really takes over my body. It's really bizarre. I know. I know. All right, so you know what I've been watching is this Woodstock 1999. I, I, listen, I heard about this show. Uh, a lot of people talking about I it. I told you. I about wanted it. to check it out for myself, you know, because I watched the Woodstock 1969 documentary, too. and I thought that was fantastic. How many episodes are there here in this 99 one? I don't remember, but I watched it the other day. Because I've watched the first one, the second one. I can't watch TV without falling asleep, as I said. So I think I made it through like the middle part of the second one, man. But these guys that put on this concert. The same He's guy. Money hungry. Yeah, Michael the same Lang. Guy. Yeah. He's Goofy the same hippie. guy as who did the sixty nine. But then there's another guy. Was he involved in sixty nine too? I, I don't know. The main guy who's they, involved for the ninety nine one who they brought on board who was kind of the dick. Mm-hmm. Um John something, I forgot his last name. But doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean they're just they get they got money hungry. I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy. They're taking no. away people's water and all that stuff. I mean, these kids couldn't even afford to eat or drink at this thing. They're getting so fucked up, Cam. And then the, 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 the bands that they, that they, you know, hired to perform at this, you know, festival are just creating such a crazy, like, vibe inside the actual, it, it, it forced all these kids to go crazy, get violent, and go nuts. No, Andy. No, These no, bands no. that you like are very scary. Corn yeah. with a K. I oh, mean, right. listen. Once Corn came on and Limp Bizkit, what do you think they? What do you, think, they, what do you think that crowd wanted? What do you think that sixteen to twenty-five year old all boys crowd wanted? They want all boys? hard, pre- pretty much. A lot of girls. There. There's some girls. You know, and they all got. Oh my god, a I lot of rapey people going that. on. I know. But the reason is, like, what do you think Corn's supposed to do? Not go out there and kick ass? That hell yeah. Listen, I don't they blame didn't, the band. No, well, you kind of just did. And no. even Limp Bizkit, who cares what they did? They're trying to get it right, pumped up. Yeah, but I don't blame the band. That's how they perform all the time. They Plus, booed Jewel off the stage. When you're perform, why? I you haven't gotten to that point because she was too mellow. Well, yeah. What do you think that crowd wanted? Well, I think the people who I think about it, people think of Woodstock. They're thinking of like peace and love and all that. No. And it just wasn't that. This was hard. This, this is ninety nine. This is like everybody's like it's like the Attitude Era. Everybody's pissed off. They want to go. Yeah, but there's festivals all over, Cam, where it just, the, the, the violence isn't there and the craziness isn't there. Well, they got cheap. They, were, they got cheap. They had, they went off brand, like they went outside to like hire a different company to, to vendor to bring mm-hmm. in the food and stuff, mm-hmm. and they didn't want to deal with it. And then they went off and tried to find the trash company, mm-hmm. a different one that was less expensive. So they barely came. So the trash piled up. The sewer, the sewage shit, the porta potty company, security was cheap. the security, the security were just par- pe- pe- kids, twenty five years old, partying with everybody else. I know. But they had free passes. Mm-hmm. It was the weirdest nightmare. A lot of people will will work, you know, whether like uh, some volunteer position at a festival, whether cleanup crew, security, whatever. Just no one's so, armed, just so they can get in. I know. Well, that's what they did. No one's armed. What are you gonna no. do? No. Say no to somebody. And I they had no water. Everything was overpriced. Yeah. Kids were like four dollars for a bottle of water. Overdosing out the wazoo mm-hmm. on all kinds of. Well, you're going to see Molly. that at a lot of festivals and stuff like that, but you don't see the aggress- aggression and the anger. Typically, because at a lot of festivals, you don't have those type of bands that are. Well, your festivals you go to, Andy, like they're just like ah, you know, and it's fine. But like, I don't go to. A, I don't want to go to a festival. I would never go to a festival anyway. I don't want to be around that many people. I like going to like the metal concerts you go to now. Like, if you're not in the pit, you're just chilling, watching. What's going on in the pit? The guys are, it's actually very respectful. Go and listen to me. People are bloodied. Listen to me. Be, I've been, I've been doing that when I was a kid, man. I'd go in the you pit. You would go in the pit? When I was like 14, 15, mm-hmm. 16. You'd get rocked in there. I was n- crushing cats. And then you get the big boy that puts you down. And he let, he picks you back up. Oh, does he? Yes. Okay. Until I did get in one fight at Point Fest. You did? Lie. Yeah. What's Plain Fest? Point Fest. Oh, Point Fest, yeah. I did get into a fight. My brother buckled a kid. First time he's ever punched anybody in his life, knocked this kid out. Because the kid started punching me. Anyway, very bizarre. The point is, though, like at these metal bands like Lamb of God, I'm not getting into the pit. I sit up in the whatever. I'll spend the money. I don't. I want to chill. I want to listen. But in the pit, like, you'll hit each other. You let it out. You let it out. You let it out. Even some girls are in there, like, doing. And all of a sudden, somebody gets rocked. <clears throat> and they'll lift them up and help them out. 
And it's pretty organized, man. Now, Pantera back in the 90s, the guys got rocked, dude. Don't Keep get me wrong. Keep me out of the pit, okay? Yeah, Andy, you'd get destroyed, man. I'm not going in the pit. I'm not going in the pit. Yeah, we know. Okay. But I, I saw what was going on in the pit. I'm not touching it either, you know? Did you see? How about the fucking party scene at night? Yes, you haven't mm-hmm, gotten mm-hmm, to that mm-hmm, part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, they're like, no one's sleeping. Everybody's starved. No, no. So it's sleeping. four days, too. And you're crushing Maui and mm-hmm. double stack Mitsubishi fucking ecstasy pills. But remember in the 90s, you got those like double stack Mitsubishis. And so they're all getting fucked up. There's no water. They're all like, just, they're so dehydrated. It's a fucking nightmare. Girls are getting raped out the wazoo. What do you mean? I mean, what that's mean? a what strong do I mean? word. You've already upset the people by... by no, how about the... I did, I'm not... Did I say it's cool? No, 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 no. What are you talking about? No, girls got raped out there. They got... T- but here's the difference. Though. But a lot of women are running around naked and I know. stuff like that. And a lot of men are, too. And so, like, the girl's like, I can't believe the guy touched my boobs. I got naked, and I went and crowd surfed for an hour, and the guys were touching my boobs. Like, I, like well, 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 no that's shit. that's what the organizers were but saying. Then, but then, like, guys would steal this bus, and they brought... And they were like... They found a girl just like, yeah, yeah they're there was catching na- shit on fire. Nasty ass shit going on, dude. I know, but it's they pulled the girl out of that bus. Yeah, whatever. I know. Yeah. Yeah. How about the one dude, Wide Clef Giant? Mm-hmm. He did the uh, Jimi Hendrix what national is... anthem, whatever. No, there's a different guy then. Maybe, that maybe was Wide Clef. Okay, so that, w- one dude, and he goes, what a di- dipshit. And he goes on stage, he goes, I want everybody to throw things up at me. Yeah, yeah that was him when he was doing the what national a anthem with the guitar. And, and, and everybody's like, like, like Jimmy oh. Hendrix. And everybody's he like, him to throw the plastic bottles. And so then he starts getting pelts. He's like, Ugh. like, what are you doing, you moron? Why yeah. would you tell the crowd to throw he, shit at he you? He said specifically, throw the plastic bottles. Yeah, up on stage. And, and now his band is getting yeah, just his bandmates are getting rocked. Things. And he, they had a, how stupid are you, yeah. dumbass? He sucks anyway. Well, he's okay, but he didn't really perform. He just did like the Jimmy Hendrix, because Jimi Hendrix played yeah, I know. at the 1969. Yeah, I know. And did the national anthem, and so he was doing that, you know? I'm just not into that kind of, I don't like to be around that many people, man. Like I told you, I like, no. I like I, 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 especially with my wife, like Jesus hey, Christ. I'll give you an example. So like, you know, I'm going to the fish show, but they're, they're, they're playing four nights in a row, but I'm, I'm only going for one night. Well, people be doing LSD. Oh, oh yeah. you could find whatever you want to be doing it down with it. Yeah, oh, at a fish show? Oh. But, yeah, but, like, for four nights. Like, when I was younger, I, w- I, w- I would go for four nights. Oh, yeah. And man. camp and do all that. Nah, but, you know, that. I'm not doing that, man. Hell no. So, oh, I, I just want, I want to see him one time. For yeah. me, it's about the music. <coughs> same songs four nights in a row? I don't know. Well, I'm not going to play that. the same songs, but, you know. Oh, they got that oh. many songs? Oh, yeah, I yeah. guess they got tons. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right on that. Well, I don't know. Two hours set? Another two? Oh, shit. Well, you may have some repeats or whatever, but <coughs> I don't know. it I won't know. sound the same. You know, I go to Colorado. I like how you go to Colorado, though. That's a cool spot, man. I, I love like Colorado. I, I, I do that. I got to get out of this heat, man. It's so hot here right now, so, and it's so sticky. It's just gross. It's, you can't do anything, you know. Like, you, it, if you go outside, I'm, I'm, I'm miserable. I hate wearing, like, shorts. Mm-hmm. Dons don't wear shorts, just so you know. Who doesn't wear shorts? Dons don't. What's a Don? Like a Don Juan? Fucking Don, man. He, Don's like tell, the Tony man, Soprano. Like, uh, Tony yeah, Soprano's yeah, yeah, wearing yeah. shorts. He's like, no, Don's don't wear fucking shorts, even at a barbecue. Wear pants. I'm not I wearing, hate wearing shorts, shorts today because we got a big meeting today. I know. I got to change my. Cam had to bring a change of clothes today for the meeting. Well, I've been up since 4 30. I'm so gross. I feel like I, I, I need a shower. I've been sweating, drinking coffee all morning. Now I got to do this. And I got to change. My, my pants don't really fit me that well. And then and I, don't, I hate like shaking hands with people because I'm just like I just feel and you gross. You smell yourself, you said. Yeah, well, like I'm just I've been up since four thirty, man. Like I, I you know, it's like I just gross, I feel man. like uncomfortable as shit mm. always. Um, a couple things I want to get to. Number one, Mike Babcock has decided he's yeah, not going to coach that. University of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Hey, you know what? I kind of respect that. <laughs> About Babcock, you know, he had said originally that this was kind of like a one-year plan, maybe a two-year plan, but you know, he kind of waited. I don't think there's anything like scandalous, at least as far as I know, as to why he like stepped down. But you know, sometimes Cam, you know, like some of these coaches, man, they don't know how to get out of coaching. Like you, you know, which coaches are defined by being a coach, and some guys just coach because it's like their profession. Sometimes there's other things you can do. He's still getting paid by Toronto. This is the last year he gets paid by Toronto. He's making six million, whatever he's making. Six million, six and a half. Whatever it is. This guy's still getting paid. He loves to hunt. He loves to water ski. He loves to do a lot of other things. And he's like, I'm just gonna go enjoy life right now. I respect that. And sometimes you don't have well, to coach every single day well, of your no life. Sh- why'd you coach anyway? Like if I'm like his wife 
or whatever. I'm like, where are you going? You're coaching Saskatchewan. No offense. We mm-hmm. love you up there. No, no offense. but like University of Saskatchewan. Wait, that's totally cool. I think it's but, the hometown of maybe where his wife is from or something. Oh, yeah, but they're not living up there, are they? It's Saskatchewan. Well, they were living there when he's coaching. <laughs> okay. Well, but, okay, then fine. Then that makes sense then. But, I'm, but, but if I'm his wife, I'm like, I, I kind of want to spend time with you. Maybe, he's, maybe she mm-hmm. doesn't. I don't, I don't know. But you would think, like, you're coaching that team after what you've done. Mm-hmm. How about we chill and, like, regroup and go on a bunch of vacations to Italy? There's no COVID shit anymore. Well, he likes to enjoy. hunt. Apparently, he's got all these hunting trips planned. Let me say yeah, this about Mike. Do. I'll say this about Mike Babcock. I feel like, and like I said, you know, I appreciate and respect these people that aren't just completely just defined by whatever they do for a living. I find that in media a lot of times, Cam. Everyone's just, like, defined by, like, being, like, a media guy. Like, they never want to, like, they don't do anything else besides work or just be a media guy. You know, sometimes you, th- there's other things you can do. Find other hobbies, other things that kind of, like, make you happy. What and do you do? Golf in your backyard with Waggle Golf? <laughs> <laughs> Who says that was my backyard? People chirp in that club, too. You can look at the grass and know, Andy. <laughs> that's, that's bent grass. And you, <laughs> Jaisa? <laughs> Actually, I do have Jarja. Jaisa? Is it? <laughs> Jaisa? How you pronounce it? I don't know. So anyway, getting back to Babcock, you know, listen, he's got other things that he wants to do. But I truly believe, like the Toronto thing, obviously backfired on him. It, it it it's not a good look on Mike Babcock. When he left there, it was a bad look. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay, they way too much attention on him. He needs a general manager whenever he comes back into the NHL. And because if he wants to coach in the NHL one day, Cam, I would say that you know what, he'll probably get another chance to coach in the NHL if he wants that. Somebody may give him another chance, but he's got to work for a GM that is kind of as as tough as he is, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, he can't Somebody run the show. who's going to say, hey, listen, you don't worry about this and that and this. You just go coach. And I feel like when he was working with, you know, our boy there in uh, in Toronto, Kyle, you know? Kyle Doobie. I, I just think he, he, he just... He, Hi, he, Kyle. He, he, he didn't have that. He didn't Hi. have that. Where he had it with Lou, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I get you. And so he didn't have that. So he needs he needs to work with the GM. That's kind of like you Kyle's know, like bringing Kyle, that dude. This comes in. The, well, hello, Mike. Um, can we talk? I got things to do. Oh, okay, that that's fine, Mike. They, I'll, I'll go back up to my office. Just, just tell me when you're ready. Like that kind of mm-hmm. thing, you know. I'm just talking about having a GM as strong of a personality I know. as his. I know. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, you, know. you agree with that though? Kind of. If you're a guy like him, you, you can't, Army would be good with him. Army would be good. But Kenny Holland was great for him. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Kenny. Yep. Yeah, somebody established. Like Kyle's probably like, hey, can mm-hmm. I talk to you? No, I'm busy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Patrick Kane. Uh, the rumors are just like floating around in terms of where he's going to go. Where Where do you think he's going to end up, Cam? Chicago. You do? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not in the rumor mill, dude. I'm not going to act like I am. Okay, so don't give out where would you like department. to see him? Somewhere different. I want to see change. You know, I want to see uh, maybe go to New York or maybe go to uh, Columbus or maybe go to... Uh, I don't know. I don't know why St. he Lewis. would go to Columbus. What? I don't, I don't know why he would go to Columbus. I don't know why he go. I don't know if Chicago would trade him to the Blues. Andy, I'm just throwing goofy I shit know, out. I don't. I, I didn't even take it seriously. Okay. I haven't even thought okay. about it. I'm let, just me, being let, goofy. let me give you the a Blues team. can't do anything. I know that. Let me give you a team. I'm not going to sit here and say this is 100 percent going to happen. But Vegas. Some, somebody pointed this out to me, and well, Vegas. Hey, listen, okay. that, that would never surprise me, uh-huh. right? If he went to Vegas. <laughs> If he went to Vegas, that would never shock anybody. But I'll throw this team out there with Patrick Kane. The New York Islanders. Oh! And people say, well, the Islanders, man. They just, all they did was take care of the, their own business in-house this past offseason. They didn't go out and get anybody. People questioning Lou, all of that. But I hear that he and Lou kind of have a relationship that goes back to all their time spent together with USA Hockey. I bet. A lot of people Olympics, world Lou. championships, World Cups, all that type of stuff, Cam. So we've heard that from all the big dogs who played in the 90s, you know, just from having like a, that one experience or maybe two experiences being around Lou. I know. That relationship that they have with him forever from playing in the World Cup back in 96 and maybe in Olympics. All those guys speak so highly of Lou. So could Lou convince him to come to the New York Islanders? I'm just saying they it's, need a, something. it's another team yeah. that I'm going to throw out there. And if you're going to sit here and tell me like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, none of these other teams make sense either. And Toronto, which I know, listen. Oh, yeah, I heard that too. Okay. And, and when Brian Burke was there, he was he was drafting and signing and trading for Americans left and right. I used to call him America's team. You know, back when, when uh, Brian Burke was there. 
but you know, I, I, I want to see Toronto like get over the hump on their own, you know, with like the four players they have that are making a shit ton of money. Like, let's see if they can do it. They need to go out and get Patrick Kane to get them over the hump. I wouldn't feel the same level of accomplishment if I'm a Toronto fan. I want to see these guys do it on their own. And then maybe go out and get another guy who can maybe help them maybe get to that next level. Maybe maybe Patrick Kane's that guy. I don't know. But the New York Islanders, man. I, they need some. It's a sleeper. People have thrown out the Rangers. Now I'm here in Columbus because they got Johnny Goodrow. All of a sudden, Columbus is in on everybody. I mean, maybe, well, maybe, that's, maybe how they, it, well, hey, that's how it works. I got you. And maybe they would. Is that where he wants to go at this stage of his career? I don't know, man. Like, I, I Where's can't he speak from? For from Buffalo. And a lot of people have always speculated that he would finish his career in Buffalo. They're not ready yet. They're not ready yet. Mm-mm. Now I wouldn't. I wouldn't roll a di- playing your hometown when it's shitty like that. I don't mm, want to do it. It's tough. You're losing every game. That's it's tough. not worth it. Well, Patrick Kane has proven, and I, I, this is not a chirp or a negative at all. It's just the reality. He alone can't get a team to the playoffs. Yeah. You know, he can have great seasons and play at a high level like he always does in Chicago. It doesn't guarantee you playoff success. So yeah, they were loaded. That Those teams were loaded. So dude. the Islanders, you know, obviously had some good seasons before they took a step back last year. I think COVID rocked them, the schedule. Remember they had to play all those road games right off the bat? Yeah, like 12, yeah, 20. Yeah, something crazy. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, but a lot of good players entering their final year. I'll say this, though, real, real quick. Vladimir Tarasenko entering the final year of his deal. Um, you know, the Blues locked up Robert Thomas. Um, they got Cairo, who I feel like they're trying desperately to sign Cairo. I don't think they want to have this linger much longer. I don't know if they can do it or not. Cairo, I think, is going to have an unbelievable season this year. I you know, agree. I mean, he had these issues last year down the stretch where he didn't play some games, and he still finished with, like, close to, you know, whatever. He had 27 goals, 75 yeah, points. 30. This guy would not surprise me one bit if he all of a sudden puts up 35 well, goals and 85 points this season. Yeah, and he might. And he does that, then how much money are you talking about paying him? Same. Are you going to have to pay him more than Robert Thomas, who signed the deal at 8.1? So I think it's in the Blues' best interest probably, and I'm not sure if they look at it the same way or not, to probably try to get that done now. And, and he may say, hey, listen, let's just hold on. I don't know. Is it, sometimes these deals are harder to get done, but at the same time uh, – uh, I'll be watching Jordan Carver just like everybody else. And Vladimir Tarasenko, the same thing. Th- this is the first time in a while every team in the league will have their eyes on Vladimir Tarasenko. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. They want to see it. They, they want to see everything from Tarasenko. Okay? Final year of his deal. He's How old is he, 32? Yeah, somewhere at 30, 31, 32. And if he signs for 30, a 30-31. What do you think, five, six-year deal? He's going to want that. Like, would you want to sign any player at 32 no, years old? I just no. wouldn't do but it. But some guys GM. who just can naturally put the puck in the net, I get it. But, you know. I don't know, that, that, that's Listen. I hate that's that. That's why it's an important year to pay attention to and, and watch him. He's different than an O'Reilly, for example. O'Reilly, you know, who's not the fastest skater. And, I, you know, is is he eventually going to become, like, your number three center? You know, like, and, and what are you What are you paying? What are you paying your number three center? I know he's your leader, but what do you pay? Yeah. Your, I don't. And he's a great. I don't leader. like those so, long term so 30, 30 year old contracts. So I think you compensate him in a way that reflects what he's done, and also the fact that he is the leader. But I think you got to be careful with that term. Everybody knows. But that. even Kyra, and Doug Armstrong certainly knows that. kyrie has got some. Um, he's going to have a lot more opportunities on the power play too. Oh yeah, because of David Perron being gone. Correct. And he'll he's score. Gonna, he's going to score seven more goals. He'll have thirty five. Yeah. In that range, and eighty five. Yeah. I truly believe. 85 points gets you a lot of money. 100, 100 points oh. gets you a <laughs> fuck ton oh, of yeah. money. Ask oh, yeah. Uber do. Yeah, yeah. Uber do. How's that going to look in six years? I don't know, man. <laughs> Ten and a half? God dang d dog. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of coin. 36 years old. Mm-hmm. And he's not like a... I don't know. I don't, I don't watch him enough, to be honest with you. Uber do? I don't uh, watch him enough. He's an unbelievable hockey player. His, I, I his, know. his playmaking and passing ability. You know how some Will guys he age well? just look duff, different? Will he age I don't know. well? He's an That's amazing passer. The, what's on your eye? Did somebody hit you in the eye? No, do you see that? What What is on I your don't eye? Know. I got bit by something. What is on your Who punched you? Well, it's not a punch. Look Should at I it. bully you in the game again? No, this has been like for like two or three weeks. And it's starting I gotta to go start away. skating with Andy, I think, guys. We got another charity game coming up against the Warriors. We want to play? Listen to all you guys. I, sometimes I got to. I gotta go out there and skate with Andy. I think I think they're bullying him a little too much. <laughs> you don't have anybody to take care of you, and now it's a trickle down effect to the dipshits. Now they're chirping, and I, I got to put my foot down on that. <laughs> I know, they can't get the goddamn puck. You're chirping, Andy. Like if Jax wants to chirp you, it's fine, Otter. But these other guys, I ain't playing. 
I'm serious, <laughs> man. I'm fucking serious. I would piss me off. It really would I piss know. me off. Well, dude, it's just it's yeah, you just want to have. I want to chirp people. time out there. Yeah, no, know, you know, not, know not you. you. I know you do. Not them. I want to. There's no bad players out there. No, I know chirping you. But yeah, okay. No, I know. But you, you know. know what I mean. Like I'm trying to get you the damn. I'm pot. Trying, I told no, you. That. Andy's not totally. Andy's pretty good. Like he, I chirp you. I chirp you. But you, you know where to go. You know how to get a You're not toe dragging guys in the middle. Although you did that, do that at the beginning, and then we we let you know. But remember, you were trying to stick hand a little too much. Just just pass the puck. Yeah, so good. But I. But then you started doing. I'm it. not one of those guys that plays like two, three times a week and whatever. You know, I'll, I'll take. But you a know year who the you know time. who the guys are. You get pissed off at mm-hmm. on the ice are the guys that hold the puck the whole fucking time that yeah. try to toe drag guys in the middle and they get they don't get back. Those kind of guys. Mm-hmm. They don't like get the puck off the wall. They shoot slap shots from the point. Like, what? Don't shoot slap shots from the point when there's 15 guys in front of that dumb fuck. Don't do that. Don't even wrist it in. That's why. That's how I broke my finger. Hey, I know. Matt no, Lashaw but Lashy took didn't. A, he took a no, slap shot. it was not a slap shot. That was a wrist. It just hit you in the right spot. Dude, he was wrist. I was, I was tapping my stick to tip the damn thing no, in. It wasn't if right. Lashy's going to do it, I trust it. It was a slap shot. But here's the deal. Whenever you're, whenever you're playing shinny, and you're that D man's on the point, and he's trying to get that puck through. The initial reaction with everybody is to bat it down. And when you bat things down, that's when it gets tipped up and hits you in the jaw. Mm-hmm. Or, or when you go cross ice passes, and somebody gets their stick in the way and oh, it flips and it up. Oh, yeah. Andy, that's just get out of the way. Don't mm-hmm. even try to intercept that pass. Just let it go. Right. That's how guys get rocked. Yeah. Or when you're on the bench and somebody does that on the ice. Yeah. All of a sudden it comes flying in the bench. Yes. Yeah, don't, you gotta be careful of that. Don't even put your stick out there. You need to bat that thing down. All right, Tom Gallardi is uh, on this uh, edition of the Cam and Strick podcast. The owner of the Dallas Stars, man. I mean, his family is among the wealthiest in all of Canada. I think their last time I checked, their net worth is north of six billion, something like that. Let me that. tell you something. You know you're cool, and this is what I would do too if I had a ton of money. Ton of money. You own your shit, then you buy a couple golf courses, so they're yours and fucking. In Ireland, you're buying a, probably the most beautiful scenery, Andy. Rolling hills, probably a castle in the distance at your own golf course. So you travel there. You own your own resort so mm-hmm. that you anywhere you go, you could stay at your spot. And you're making enough money doing shit. So you have your toy golf, co- uh, uh, golf it's a course. a long way to go to play golf. Yeah, though. but it's, it's, so you have your private jet, dude, that it's unbelievable. Like Tommy Dundon has his in Texas. Well, he probably has a couple <laughs> here, too. No, you're right. But then you own, your hobby mm-hmm. is the Dallas Stars. That's not your money maker. That's your hobby. And it's good when these billionaires you think that way. Like, I'm going to dump. I might be break even here, but I, I'm dumping money in mm-hmm. to make it. This is my hobby. And I, how cool would it be doing own a fucking NHL team like that where you're making good money yeah. and you could just be, be an awesome owner and really spend the money to make everybody happy and, I don't yeah, know, no. classy. Oh, class, 100%. Wouldn't that be cool? I hear, Mar- I hear Bra- uh, Brad Marchand owns a house in the Bahamas. That's where he goes in the offseason. Why wouldn't you? Imagine going to the Bahamas and just living there. <sighs> Michael Jordan's got an amazing spot in the Bahamas. Like He's I mean, goofy with his stuff, man. Who, Jordan? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, I love Jordan, but he's he dresses like shit. His houses look like shit. Like, he doesn't have any style to him. Like, I love... Michael Jordan yes. doesn't have any style? Explain I was this thinking one. about this the other day. I love his... Michael Jordan is... houses look he's, bad? Yeah, man. They're all goofy looking. No, you're looking at the old one that he man. had in Chicago that he, he sold He's done some years. stupid... Well, look what he, how he dresses. Like, he doesn't have style to him. Think about it. I, and I love the dude. He wears like Jordan shit. And he's kind of a dick. You know? Is he? Yeah. I mean, you, apparently you have all this information I about just, Jordan. I used to love him, and I still do, and I like him better than LeBron. Where do you see him he's being not nerdy. a dick? Oh, well. I mean, just look, look into it. He's addicted. He addicted people. Probably so, is. I mean, you he's know, very why. powerful. Yeah, I know. I'm just letting you know. I mean, a lot of your heroes are dicks. I, I, like, like who? I'm just saying. Who's my hero? Your NBA. F- Who's my hero that you like? You think I have heroes that are in it? Charles Barkley, love him. Yeah, he's. I cool. like Jordan. I just think Jordan, like his style's not there for for mm-hmm. selling all these shoes. Like he just never. I don't know. James Harden for his birthday, somebody gave him a briefcase full of cash, and he's like, he's like pulling cash out. See, I don't. I don't look, all those guys are all miserable. I mean, like look, Kevin Durant. They. I, I'm on basketball. They all seem goddamn miserable. You think they're miserable? They look, except for like Steph Curry, like. But I think that's all... nerdy. Like when you're making like you know forty, fifty million bucks a year, he's like mopey. And like you're, you have a a, a briefcase full of cash. Oh, like, cool. Like, like we get it. Oh, dude. cool. Why don't you give it to somebody that doesn't right. have money? Then. Oh, cool. You got money. We know you have money. 
Yeah, but we know you. All the hanger honors too, who are like just smiling, so like so, so happy to hang. They like worship the guy that they're hanging with too. Yeah, yeah. man. Well, you when know? they bring when they get cool toys, you tend to worship uh, worship mm. them a little bit more, Andy. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. they bring something to the table. Mm-hmm. That's why nobody worships you because <laughs> you're like, oh, come over to my party. You're like, oh, cool, I'm hungry. Well, we have veggies. <laughs> And Dude, I cooked some rosemary couscous last night. That was amazing, dude. I know. I like couscous, man. It's good well, for you. Eat it's some it's of that? Doing it. Yeah, yeah. But I like a fat ass salmon. I on brought it or you some. I brought you some. I'll. I'll Don't actually. Don't give me I'll food. I'm not going to eat a little it. Don't bit. waste your time. Don't waste your time cooking me anything. To be honest with you, no. I don't think. I'm just not interested in the stuff that you cook. Like it's not worth. You got to chirp your one thing about your golf game because your buddy told one me thing. things. Well, a lot of things. Well, yeah. What? Like you don't even tee off. What are we talking about? You will not hit from the tee. Yeah, That's, I do. No, he says you refuse to hit at the from end, the tee. At the end, because I was losing all my balls. I was slicing it so bad, I was okay, losing my balls. You so told me you end. didn't Andy, lose any balls that chirp. day. Andy. He said you won't hit from the tee. Like, there's no excuse for you to live on a club and not to be getting any better, Cam. Yeah, I've been golfing for the past five days straight. And you're not getting better? I'm, yeah, I am. A lot better. That day, I was but actually pretty good. But you're not hitting good. from the tee. That's not Dude, golf. we killed her, but... At the very end, when I no, fifteen no, beer deep, the whole time. And what do you talk? You will not hit from the that's tee. A, that's just a lie. Is that a bad Shut information? Up. Yeah, that's a lie. I hit from the tee. Now I would slice the shit out of it, and then at the end, like you know, like I've been losing balls. I don't want to bar. I'm like, I'm just not gonna. I, I was just jamming out. I entertain people. You come golf on my course. I'm gonna take care of you. You got to hit from the tee, Andy. I don't want you hitting from the tees because you're gonna be start borrowing my fucking balls. You do what you want to do. And I can do what I want. You didn't invite me anywhere. That's my course. Well, I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. I'll do what I want on, on there, Andy. Like, okay. you know, you listen to my, those are my rules. Like, what are Start you hitting about? from the if I, if I, I might not, I might skip five holes and just jam out to Pantera. Mm. Oh, I do that. While you guys do your shit. I don't listen to the Pantera, but we I'll know. skip some holes, you know. Kate and I just, Kate and I will just skip a hole, just chill, jam out, get our minds right, mm-hmm. give a Has fuck. it been a good investment? Do you like to oh, belonging God. to the club? Oh, we well, love Well, I know it. you were telling me at one oh, point and the in time food. you may not do it. I don't know. Well, well, it is expensive. You may get out of it. I mean, if I if I stop going to the club and playing golf, I could buy a, they were I could buy a $250,000 boat. They were <laughs> offering those great deals to, to join the club. My buddy, big time is buddy. It still, is it still uh, available? That Oh, it's... The thing is with my club in St. Albans, if you guys want to look it up, it's really pretty. It's top ten course. I'm on I'm on Tavern. There's two different courses out there. It's about forty miles outside of you St. Louis. You belong just to one course or do no, you do both. you get access to both? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. It's one yeah. thing. But there's two courses. Are you on the nicer course or the uh, No well there's two it, I courses. think it's the more pretty course, but it's harder. And so the reason why they rank Lewis and Clark better because it the, the way it's set up, it's you could have comp pro events on there more than taverns oh. so they give that but taverns beautiful there's no houses our house my house is on it but you can barely see it just so far away you know what yeah. i mean so it's 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 really really nice man but it's it's expensive but kate and mm-hmm. i are out there all the time what do you think waggle well, golf i've been pumping your tires up a ton oh and people God. are like what are you wearing i'm like dude that's waggle people ask i them. wore waggle golf to that event with lozy yesterday yeah Way the fuck out there mm-hmm. for was Dog it like, Nation. Was it at a golf course? No, it was at a You just compound. wear it as like regular I wore, clothes. I wore this, the octopus one. Oh, no. Nice. Badass <laughs> looking. It's fucking badass looking. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. like, where'd you get that? Because it's sweat. I was sweating. You know, I was playing hockey outside with the mm-hmm. kids and stuff. You were raising money for charity. And I wore that badass uh, shirt, that button up. Uh, no, it's not a button up. But it's it's awesome. It, it just, I don't sweat in it. It doesn't mm-hmm. smell. It doesn't like have like a pit stain or anything. It's quite lovely, dude. I posted that picture. It went viral, by the way. <laughs> uh, a waggle golf, and I, I, I put some tiger emojis on there. I thought it was a tiger on my shirt. It's not even a tiger. It's a goat, and people are like, "Dude, that's not a tiger. It's a goat." Oh, you did a couple of them. people. Every doing, time you people sending me like a picture of a cat with a goat's head on it. I mean, every time Andy posts something, creative. it's so funny. Like he's like, "I'm doing something cool," and then meanwhile, like. He's in his backyard. He's got a cheap driver. He puts the driver up like, I think this is what golfers do. And so it's just not. You're stuck. You know, this is funny. I'll man. have a new one coming it's up. It's all good. Like it, but, you know. Hey, but Travis Baker from Waggle Golf. Man, I need some of those quarter zips, though, when the weather starts Dude, getting a little cool. That's when my golf season begins. I need I'm a couple more com- combinations playing. of yeah. hats and, and mm-hmm. shit from him. Because I'm, 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 I'm golfing all this time, and I'll, I'll do yeah. it. Every time I'm out there, there's something pretty that you could film that Kate and I do. We're jamming out the heavy metal on the golf course. Mm-hmm. No one no one bugs you. Like it's, and I, I just want new combinations, man. I'll just keep I'm taking Ty to hit some balls today. And, and, and Get him into it. To warm up. Yeah. Because you and I have to play soon with that guy who won that auction item. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bring him out. Okay. 
Dude, so I mean, yeah. I'll I bring Ty out. No, I'm I'll not br- doing I'll bring that. The other That's guy. you. I'm not, uh, okay, <laughs> I, 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 it's it's enough hanging with my my wife sometimes. Mm. Oh no, on the golf course, is that hard to do? <sighs> well, no, she's great. Okay. But she, <laughs> okay. Well, what's but, the what's the deal here? But if, if her mom and dad, oh no, hang, hang. <laughs> her mom yeah. will like hit the ball. Love you, Nancy. I love you. <laughs> They've been through a lot with me. She's a lovely woman. But fuck. Do they know all about you? Oh, yes. They know every single thing about me. Mm. Every. Did you ask her I, dad you think permission I, they listen to, me. to marry her? Hell yeah. What'd you say? I go, what's up, homie? I'm oh, fun to marry God. your He's daughter. Like, you know what they <laughs> said when they went home that night? They no, like, I was oh, at a baseball that game. That was their worst fear. I was at a baseball game. I was just on, on Fox, Fox Sports because they're filming me in a crowd with her parents. And I'm like, hi. And then I did it. And like it was, you proposed at the Cardinal game? No, I told her that I'd asked her dad at the Cardinal game. Isn't Kate standing right there? Oh, we went and had a beer, you dummy. Yeah, yes. I had to be around her all the fucking time. No, we walked around. And I talked to her. I go, listen, mm. I'm going to marry your daughter. Okay. I know it's been a while. Well, no, no, you had to ask. You don't just tell him, did you? Oh, ask? Whatever I said, I don't remember. I did it right. And what he said? Absolutely. Call you son. I mean, I was shit kicking kids. <laughs> and, nah, I'm fucking doing he good. He said, stuff. "Hey, welcome into the family, son." Yeah, he's like, yeah. He said, "You're going to take care of my daughter." Yeah. I'll like, what do I tell that guy that asks You know what my daughter? wife's doing no, right no. now? What do you know I, what my I wife's tell, doing right now? What do I this tell the guy who says, can I marry your daughter? I, I, what do you say in that situation? Depends on who he is. Depends on what he the looks like, what he does. The situation you could ever be in is to have somebody who you don't like ask to marry your daughter, or your daughter marry someone you don't like, man, and you just got to let them do it. You got to let them roll with it. They got to make their own decisions. That's got to be a terrible situation. Man, I know guys I grew up with, and all you guys know what I'm talking about. You have that one buddy, and he's dating that girl, and everybody knows that girl ain't good. Mm. Like, for a fact, you know she's not good, and she's not good to him, and you love him, but you want to stay out of it, but you love him as a friend. And he's getting tortured by this broad. And you factually know she's horrible. And so you're looking at him. I go, hey, she ain't good for you. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to step into this. I don't I don't want to deal with other people's drama. I don't want to deal with it because I don't want people. But I'm telling you because I love you. She ain't good to you. She loves me. She, she, no, no, no. she loves me. She loves me. Smack you. No, she doesn't. And you just, you know for a fact. And you got to, you got to, you got to smack him in the face. Mm-hmm. And then finally, finally, there's something. And you're like, look, look, look at her phone. Look at her phone. She's like, I bet you. And all of a sudden, like, Cam. And you get the phone call from him. Hey, I got to talk to you. What up? Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I go, I fucking told you. Mm. Like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't. That's kind f- of a hard thing to tell but your Andy, buddy. If, if you he, know. going to marry her. I, listen know? to me. Well, this. But if you know that I'm going out of my way mm-hmm. to tell you something about your girl. That used to hang out with people that I know, mm-hmm. and I hear everything. You gotta listen to me, because I wouldn't give a fuck otherwise. Why would I care? But I'm telling you, she's not good. And all of a sudden, something snaps in her head, and you're like, "Oh God, Cam, what? Oh my God, you're right, you're right, you're right. I got it." And then all of a sudden, they're good with it, and they break up with her, and they're happy again. And they find somebody else, but they're stuck in this. It's like you're in a trance, Andy. It's like that fucking Waco guy is like, come on in here. Oh, my God. Give me your... David your, Koresh? Give me your daughters oh, and you're, your... You're comparing your wives. And I'm going to take care of your daughters and your wives, okay? But the men go in the other section over there, okay? I'm going to hang out. I'm going to love I'm your gonna daughters lo- and wives. Let me do the loving, okay? <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Hey, when I asked my father-in-law... Oh, Oh, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, right, they, they, they could not have been more happy. They threw yeah. an engagement party for us. And you're a good husband. They threw an engagement you're party. A good husband. But I was, I, I went to his store. You know, he owned a bunch of uh, drug stores. And, uh, oh, she got money, don't she? <laughs> <laughs> no, he owned a bunch of drug stores. That's kind of cool. And Pharmacias? And as I was walking out, I went back in. I'm like, hey, one more thing. Yeah, Let like, me get some of them like, Percocets. Can I, can I get a bottle of Grey Goose, you know? Give me some of them Percocets. <laughs> he, he gave me a bottle. That's it's funny. very uncomfortable situation to be in as a man. Oh, I was pretty confident. No, I'm just saying, like, I know where dad, he's very cool. Like, he didn't make you uncomfortable. It's just kind of like one of those well, things you have to do, though. What's uncomfortable is when you, you know, like, Kate and I went through a jam, a couple of them, and they stick, stood by my side. Remember I broke my motherfucking foot two days before Christmas? <laughs> you remember that? No. You remember? Oh, this was before me blues? and you time. No, no, no. You know. I went through that tough time, 
Like, I wasn't making money, spent money. I was trying to figure out, like, the radio station was so fucked up at the time. Remember, Andy? Everybody's getting fucked over. This is after your career? After my career. So, things are tight. Like, we want to get out of this house. Like, we had to start from scratch. Like, we had to figure out what's going on. Like, we weren't comfortable by any means. Kate's like, what are we doing? Are we... Are we, are we going to have kids? we have money? To, are we moving? Are we doing that? It's like just like, what are we doing for a... Like she's working all the time. Mm-hmm. It just sucked. And then there's two days before Christmas. I want to have a nice, cute Christmas at my cute little house. Okay. Shit's bad. Mm-hmm. Decorations are up. De- oh, de- you know how we do it. Decorations. <laughs> and then I go to Jax's Christmas party. Uh-huh. And Mikey's there and all the boys. And I'm crushing booze. And I'm doing this, doing that, you know. And I was so wasted on Uber White Home. And I was being ignorant. Mm -hmm. Because I was drinking whiskey for some stupid reason. Andy, I ain't doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Whiskey. I don't like whiskey. And I'm like, it's just a bad drink, dude, for me. Like, and for a lot of people. That's a bad one. Oh, it makes you weird. Mm -hmm. So I was ignorant in a cab ride. And Kate's getting pissy with me. Like, hey, calm down. And I'm just like, you know, sometimes. Talking shit to the cabbie? No, just, just, I just was loud. Just just loud. And I never just Just you and Kate in there. Kate and I. And we're, so we're, you jumped out of the car when no, it was no, no, no. And we get get to my house. The cabbies kind of look at Kate. Kate's like, and I just give him money, and I go inside. I'm already just in a weird mood. Whiskey makes you weird sometimes, mm-hmm. Andy. I walk in my house and I have all the Christmas decorations up, and I trip over a present, <laughs> and I turn around and I kick it as hard as I can. Oh no! What was in it? A bowling ball? It was a Jenga case. A drinking man's Jenga case. I was going to get my cousin Derek for Lake of the Ozarks. For, mm-hmm. And it's, you know, four feet tall, and it's made of wood. And I kicked the side of it, and it cr- buckled my foot oh, and broke my foot. You like, knew right away. Andy, I knew right away. I passed out. I woke up in my driveway with my phone in my hands, rain coming out. I must have gotten a fight with Kate. She went to bed, kicked me out of the house. You oh. slept outside. Dude, it was the weirdest thing. Dude, it was the weirdest thing. Don't ever thing. drink whiskey again. I mean, I'm, I'm the good drunk. I don't do this stuff. And so I broke my fucking foot. I couldn't do anything. Did and you that go cost, to the doctor or yeah, the hospital? it costs money too. No insurance. When you break your foot, mm-hmm. well, I don't know if I had, no, I didn't. Or maybe I did, but I'm paying for insurance, whatever mm-hmm. it was, because you don't mm-hmm. have your you know, NHL insurance anymore. Mm-hmm. So we have hosting Christmas at my house. I don't have any money. Don't know really what I'm going to do with my life. I just got so wasted, pissed Kate off, and then I break my foot two days before we're hosting Christmas, or a night before we're hosting Christmas. I'm crawling around the house while her mom and dad now have to come over and help out getting uh, things. I couldn't do anything. I'm crawling to go to the And back. that's when the dad's thinking, I should He's not like, what yes. is this guy? It was rock were bottom. Were you married yet? No. I haven't even married her yet. Oh, gosh. So you still her. hadn't asked him yet. No, no, no. no. I've been engaged for five years. Oh, okay. Remember how I've been engaged oh, yeah. for 10 years? So you asked him at the Cardinal game? And then five you, years before and that. And then you went and got and engaged this was, for five I was years. still playing when I did. So then I, I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, I got through my career and then, sh- you know, I was addicted to this. I just was, I was rock bottom there. Mm-hmm. And I broke my stupid foot off a Jenga case. Oh. And her mom and dad had to come over and do it. So we crawled out of that. Yeah. Everything's Literally. fine now. Literally. That was so, out of that. so fucking embarrassing, man. Right, she well, almost, I'm glad she you survived that one. Speaking of Jax, by the way, real quick, his son got rocked in a game this weekend because yeah. the, the the kid on the other bench didn't have the uh, door closed. So he one of those things, you know, where you like go into the side of the door yeah, when it's yeah. not open, which is like among the most dangerous things that can ever yep. happen. Okay, when I say he got rocked, I mean he he got shoved into rocked it? himself like into the yeah yeah someone angled him off or whatever. Oh. There's a video of it oh, yeah. that Jax put on Instagram. But I'm watching this, man, and it just, it just pisses me off because there's no excuse to have the gate open. And it wasn't like a bang-bang situation where someone's jumping on, on the on the ice right away or coming off yeah. the ice. Close the fucking door. So all these you know, coaches out there, if you're running a bench, make sure you have somebody who's paying attention to open and close the gate. Yeah, that okay? should be a natural reaction to natural. You, know, the you close the damn gate. Or whoever's right there, always, mm-hmm. you always have your hand on it. Yeah. Like, you're always just sitting there, like, ready, here comes... Always. Do, 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 do. Like, you know this. Yeah, like, yeah. You can still talk and look the other way, and then you go back to your, like, where you have it. Mm-hmm. I know, but sometimes you fuck up. You know up how I learned dangerous. that? And I'm never the gate guy when I'm coaching or The whatever. gatekeeper? Yeah, the gate... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you Because it, it is a lot of responsibility. <laughs> but I, but one year, I, I when Chaser was on the bench, when I was coaching with Chaser... Oh, God. He would lose his fucking mind if, if, the, if the gate was open. Well, yeah. And I've, I've never forgot that. And I always remember, hey, man, you got to close that gate. But you'll see the replay. 
It's such a dangerous play, man. The kid is lucky he didn't get seriously yeah, hurt. Yeah, that happens. So I'm glad he's okay. We love Jack. Caden. Caden, what's up, baby? You're all right, buddy. Hey, by the way, uh, uh, I know some of y'all, y'all, um, you know, I maybe sometimes somebody posts something of me hitting a guy, and then Carlo will chirp, and then Andy yes. will chirp about being late. Mm-hmm. And then That was a very late hit. And then they're like, is that what you did to Andy? Whenever we played. And then, wait, wait. And you I'm never like, know how to post that video at the right time. I'm gonna, never know how to I'm post just going to post it one of these days you again. You posted it today. No, I did it last night to, yeah. a, to a comment. But but my point is, you're like, that's what that's what Cam must have done that to Andy. I go, no, no, no. I grazed Andy. No. So I need people to see that Cam, goddamn thing. I grazed Make you. sure the volume's up if you ever go and look at this video because you hear it's the, you hear it's it, a terrible camera angle. It's a bad camera angle, but. Terrible camera angle. I just angle. angled you off. But so you can't really see. But listen how loud my head hit. This. Because you're not wearing shoulder pads. You're not very strong. I'm, I'm a lot I, heavier. I, think you, you had, I, I thought you were going to brace a little bit, Andy. I don't you just think crunched you were yourself. in the right condition to be playing that day. You Why? Because I think you were just very just. You must have been drinking whiskey that day. Oh, get out of here! No, you must have no, been drinking no, no, no. whiskey. Chaser is out there with me. <laughs> I, 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 no, no. You must. We have were chirping. Drink- no, 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 we were chirping you. We we're giving you shit, like you know, having fun. You must have been drinking whiskey. And I that just day. felt like you just you just had your head down like as usual, and you don't even shoulder pad. And it's like I don't know why you don't do that. But I just rubbed you off, just kind of like bump you to show yeah, you I'm now, stronger. Now because you. of that, I'm wearing shoulder pads, and but people are chirping my you. shoulder pads. But Andy hits his head so fucking hard off the glass. I'm like, oh god. Oh, yeah. Then he tries to kind of fight me. It's yeah. on the I didn't, video. I didn't know where I was. I was going to eat a punch. You know, I still have some issues, man. I can't remember people's I don't want to hurt you. I'm blaming that on the vaccine I, that I can't remember oh. people's names and stuff. But I think it actually comes back down to when you hit Maybe. me. When my head hit the glass. I know. I did. I thought your neck was a little stronger than that. But it's not. And no, that's okay. No, I know it is okay. And that's okay. So, yeah, thank you. But I didn't mean to hurt you on that, man. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hurt you. But I was willing to eat a punch from you. Mm-hmm. And you were thinking about it. Yeah. And I was just going to eat one and be like, okay, we're good. Oh, I know. Would you let me punch you? Yeah, I really. Would've. Yeah, and just you just would let it go. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't have hit me back. Nope. I think you might have that, Andy. Day. I swear to God, you I would looked not. at me, Andy. I the sw- eyes, and you go, "You want to go?" No, uh, uh, no, I no, didn't. you did. No, Andy, don't lie. To the no, people. you were. I was. Do- no, you I was were like, doing. Dude, I'm sorry, that. you go, wanted to fight. No, dude, shut up. You're lying to people. Swear to God on that. Go ahead, swear on your children. I, I think this swear is, on your kids. This is swear on your kids that I was trying to fight. No, I was sure you did. You're lying. See, the point is, I knew I fucked up. When I hit him, yeah, you gotta listen because whiskey, it did, whiskey does things to you. To I you didn't drink whiskey. I Andy, stop like confusing. <laughs> stop confusing people with that because I want them to think that I'm a psycho with that. But I just wanted to give him a little like, hey, a reminder. And his head hit the fucking glass so hard, and you could hear it. Okay. It didn't look that bad, but then Andy was kind of out of it, and I kind of hurt him, and I felt bad. But I was gonna let you oh, punch did me you in the face. Fuck yeah, of course. That makes me feel a little better. I did. Did Chaser feel bad? You think? Oh, absolutely not. Hell no, he didn't. Absolutely. And Bobby got you perfectly, so it doesn't matter. All right, let's get to Tom Gallardi. Real yeah. quick, though, we're going to a meeting, right? You, you, Instagram is something like, I see a lot of people posting shit and whatever. You think that it's important to, like, post with your wife? You think that's important? Like, you and your wife are posting an awful lot together now. We don't post. We post stories. Yeah, videos and stories. And yeah, they go away. Yeah, stories go away. They though. go away. That's sometimes, why I like, like it. Sometimes you post a good story. You're like, I like that to stick around. For well, you still have the video. Just post it on your thing. I, I haven't even posted anything except for my when Dad, Father's Day. is the last one I post on my back. Oh, then. really? That's the last time you posted? Yeah, but I do stories. Post. Yeah. Mm. I, I just do stories. Okay, now golf It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, then me and my wife a very a important meeting, man. You can't embarrass us during this meeting right now. Make sure oh, you're I all know. like you put your clean clothes on and everything. I gotta change. I gotta put mouthwash in. I gotta wash my hands. Mm. I gotta put clear eyes in. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I gotta put baby powder in my shoes. <laughs> all right, Tom, whole thing. Tom Gallardi, man. He is the uh, the owner of the, the Dallas Stars. The owner. No, no, Gallardi. Yeah. You said Galoni. Gallardi. Oh. Didn't I say that? He's the owner of the Dallas Stars. We yeah, like I having know. the owners on. Dude. Yeah. He was a little uh, at the beginning. Oh, he's very quiet. Of the, and then he starts laughing. I don't know. I think he got he sick of laughing. us by the end of it. Oh, by the end, he was ready to go. He does uh, he, Because he's owners, we get the fucking owners on. Like, I mean, no one else really does that, to be completely honest with you. So we get the big dicks on, and they're interesting because they make a ton of money, and they're successful, and I like picking their brains. But they're not used to Hank talking to guys like no, us. They're no. used to like... Hello, Tom. Okay, Dallas What is Stars. your plan for this offseason? Oh, the power play head, or how is it the, the venue? You know, no, yeah, no, we're like, yeah. what's up, homie? Like, what are yeah. you, uh, what you doing? How do you plan to upgrade the area around uh, the building? Yeah, yeah, like, no, no, no. We're like, hey, man, like, what are you doing, dude? Are you, uh, what are you, in Texas? Are you cruising? Are you, oh, you're going to fucking Ireland? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, <laughs> I know, man. All, All right, right, Hair but, Club. Yeah. 
brings us the Cam and Strick podcast. Cam, regrow, restore, and uh, replace your hair. God damn right. You know? I mean, yeah, don't let it go. Don't no, let do it go. not let it, it costs go. more money. Yeah. Been wearing a hat a lot, though. Does wearing a hat make you lose your hair? Is that? I don't know. Is that you, true? You know what makes you lose your hair when you... Mm-hmm. Probably your genetics more than anything. I, I, hats probably don't help. It's all genetics, you think? But I got, I got to work. I got to get hair club in back of my head. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, <coughs> Cam and Strick hats, by the way, available at awesome. com. Thanks to our boy over there at Victor Hockey. Say what's up to Adam from Victor Hockey. Dude, man. they got badass hats, badass man. Badass shit. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. He's trying to come up with our, um, you know, toe dragon then cougar shirt. If anybody wants to, like, illustrate something for us, hey, you, like, we, it's, it's we a, may pick you for, our, a, for our apparel. Clip this off. It's a... Hockey player on the sidewalk. So you see the back of him. He's got a backwards hat. He's got that flow in the back. No shirt on. Tight sh- jack shorts with cool roller blades. And a cute girl is walking down. And he's told. She just sees him. He she's just, just like, whoa. Her she's ass. like, whoa. Like, kind of like, whoa, this yes. guy's a stud. And you're toe dragging her. Yeah. And then that's badass. And she's got that flirtation. And she's look. like, oh my God, mm-hmm. there he is. There's mm-hmm. Cam in the subdivision. Oh, there's Andy. He plays for the blues. There's Andy in the subdivision. There's Cam. There's a blues player. Oh my God. There's Andy on his Mars I gotta, blades. I got to go out to my, my mailbox again. Here he comes. I go to my mailbox again. No mail in there. None. <laughs> well, it's 7 30 in the morning. She already got it. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps going out there. Mail hasn't come yet. Hair Club, man. Check out that uh, landing page. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Go to that phone number 800 279 7878, baby. Yeah. And uh, sign up on your first consultation today. You'll make some money. Uh, you'll save some money. All right, CarShield and CarShield.com. Uh, we love our friend Nick and everybody over there at CarShield. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481 with CarShield and CarShield.com, baby. Mention that promo code CAM, which is very embarrassing, but you're going to save some money. That's why I tell you to do it, okay? Save a little bit of money. When you mention that promo code. But again, you never know when something's going to go down, Cam. It could be your uh, mm-hmm. alternator. could be that starter. could be the computer. could be anything, Andy. And then you're really in a uh, gang of trouble, man, if that starter goes out, man. And you're you're stuck where you are. And you just can't move the car. Girls are watching you. It's oh, very embarrassing. Oh, fuck, that happened to me. Yeah, yeah, so don't let that happen to you. Get Car Shield because if it does, it's no big deal. They come and they rescue you. And uh, plus, you can uh, pick your mechanic and pick where you want to have your car service. It really is an incredible, too good to be true process with our friends over there at Car Shield. Waggle Golf, man. I think I might do some putting today in your backyard at the course. And he acts like he's at fucking St. Louis Country Club. Dude, it's the most. He thinks he's walking. He's acting like he's walking Missouri. around St. Louis Country Club. He's in his backyard. There's a trampoline in the backyard. Look at look at look closely in the. Den. There's a trampoline back there. <laughs> no, there's not. Yeah, there is. I'd kill my grass if I put the trampoline back there. You repeat everything I say. You have a trampoline in your backyard. I've seen the pictures. I don't I... have a trampoline. I do not have a trampoline in my backyard. Mm. Maybe it's your neighbor. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe it's your neighbor with all the kids' toys in the backyard. They need to, like, Oh, see, that's what I mean. That that's a, that's yard, what it man. is, then. Your neighbor. Tell them to clean it up a little bit. Yeah. You, your, your backyard Can is spotless. Can you say that? Uh, what do no. you say to them? You just move into a nicer subdivision. Home. No, I got a plan, dude. Listen, what I do. I've been doing real estate since I was a young one, and I, I got a plan. And always, I know you do. I've I know always you do. made money on my house. I know you do. Yeah. No, Andy knows how to make money. So no there's a plan in place. Sometimes you got to be patient. It may take seven. Andy does years. everything around the house. We talked about this. <laughs> like what? <laughs> everything. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Andy does that from the moment he gets up. Mm. He does this everything. Cooks, hey, cleans, takes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I like going to the kids' sporting events. And, and, oh, that's no, Andy doesn't miss anything. I'll wait four hours so he can go do a kid thing, and I have to sit around and wait for him to get it done. But Andy, I like Andy going. Andy does everything. I like going. I know you do. You got to think about me once in a while. Mm-hmm. Get your waggle on dot com. That is the um, website for waggle golf, man. They got the best looking shit in the industry. Dude, I'm getting compliments out the wow. So am I. But I get compliments <laughs> for my swing. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Am this I shit struck? looks good, dude. Like, people are like, oh, that's I, I this cool looking. It's mm-hmm. different. It's cool. It matches. It's badass. I wear it even when I'm not golfing, to be honest with you. I know. You yeah. wear it to, like, charity events and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Just to be, like, loud. Like, it looks loud and cool, but, it's like, classy. Loud. Do you wear the matching hat with yeah. it? Yeah. Well, I did the matching Camus Strick hat with the oh, last one. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Camus Strick hats pair I'm, well with Waggle they Golf. They do, because they had the same tile, yes. uh, uh, teal blue. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Oh, yeah. You wore the teal one? Yes. Dude, we got great colors on there. Go to CamusStrick.com and get your hat and get it. And go to Waggle, too, and combine the two. Maybe I'll throw in an autograph puck or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we need to get children some, will love that. Actually, we're having a photo shoot next week. We're gonna get some glossy like five by sevens. I'm gonna have to starve myself again. Oh, for the photo Jesus shoot. Christ. What are you gonna wear to that photo shoot? I don't know. Hopefully, back. Like, listen, we were on the cover of a magazine, and Cam Sweat wore pants. this. He wore this burnt <laughs> orange shirt. God, it was the worst. Shirt. I'm I like, always look like shit. Maybe I'll take you shopping. Okay. Yeah, I just look like shit. That's why I don't want to go to this meeting. They're gonna look at me and be like, eh. I know. My that's pants what happens. are too tight, know, and then I gotta happens. undo my button. Yeah. I'm sweating. Waggle well, golf, man. Uh, I wore the, it looked like a tiger, but it's a goat. Tiger colors. I had the matching hat to with it. <laughs> so anyway, check it out and let's send us your pictures. We'll post them when you're wearing your Waggle golf stuff. We'd love to see it. Well, you post them. Yeah. No, no. We'll the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Post yeah, it. Yeah. Be like, what's up, homie? Yeah, what's up? Is that what you yeah, say? Yeah. What's up, homie? Yeah, I, it's just, I, mean, I don't like saying that. I say whatever. I, I got like, my own I lingo, I don't like man. saying what's up, homie. Look, you know? I got my own lingo. I don't know what it is. I, say, I, say I don't give a shit. Else. I didn't go to. I, I mean, I'm not. You know, I read a lot, but I got my own lingo. Okay, and it, okay, it's, okay. It's just, I, I can't well, change just, it now. Just say something else. I can't change it now. Yeah, you know you can't. Want me a robot? Hey, when you go out to play a game and your skates aren't sharpened, oh yeah, like you know you're gonna play like shit. That's just the <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed, and probably get hurt. Guaranteed. You better get that sparks yeah. and save yourself lots of money over the long haul, man. Listen. The Spark Skate Sharpener has changed my life, Cam. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. Accurate, consistent sharpening every time. And you can do it anywhere you want. Anytime. It's super easy to use. You get that professional level sharpening with literally the push of a button. So elevate your performance. And uh, Cam, I, I always look at it like that. I, skating is the most important aspect of hockey. Would you agree with that? God dang right. So if your skates aren't sharp, what happens? You blow a tire and look like an idiot and hurt yourself. And well, Leo. bust your AC joint out. Oh, no. Oh, gee. Oh, no. Good Lord. So you can purchase directly at sparkshockey.com. It's S-P-A-R-X. So make sure you're spelling it the right way. Fully in stock. It ships the same day. That's what I love about it. They have them in stock, and they ship the same day. Use that promo code CAM and STRICK, and you're going to get a discount that's bigger than the discount they offer on Cyber Monday and Black Friday, CAM. Oh, my God. Inexpensive. um, Way more inexpensive than just taking your skates to get sharpened all the time. When you add it all up, it's cheaper than a new stick nowadays. About the cost of two sticks. Sticks are so expensive, Ken. Oh, God. We don't even want to talk about the sticks. It's a nightmare when your skates aren't sharp, though. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. It's like it, a dream. You know, those hockey dreams you have. It's a big-time nightmare. You have hockey dreams you have. You can't find your skate. Yes. Hockey dreams where you can't tie your skates. You're mm-hmm. late. You're late for the game. You're late for the game. Your skates are fucking dull. Oh, no. Oh, blow a tire like an Again, asshole. Again, so Sparks Hockey, use that promo code Cam and Strick. Sharpen your skates. Elevate your game. And take it to the next level. All right, Bellman and Bellman.com. Uh, Bellman Automotive, baby. Out there in Troy, Missouri, Cam. You got the Buick, the GMC. I know you're looking at that Buick Enclave, the frost white tan interior. Mm. Yeah, get it. Get it soon. Across the street, they got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. It's all in Troy, Missouri. Best customer service you'll find anywhere. Danny Bellman, Dale, the whole crew over there with Bellman Automotive, man. They treat you so well. You don't got any what, Cam, over there? Swinging day. Sa. And what do they do? Like, I mean, those they come guys. out and swing their dick around, mm-hmm. and they are very annoying, and it makes me not want to buy. They anything. act like they're, you know, they're, uh, they're beat you. shut the fuck up. <laughs> just sell you me just the car, cool. right? Just like be, just be cool. Like, yeah. so I'm like comfortable yeah. here, and oh, my yeah. wife can go there. You got to use. What they do the, you got a used car? They're going to buy your used car from you. Oh, they yeah. got inventory in stock. They got a great pre-owned selection over Maybe. there. Yep. And um, if you have bad credit, Cam, if your credit's terrible or anything like that, then hey, no problem. They're still going to approve you. They're still going to approve you. Yeah. So um, check it out. Get there. Do it today with Bellman Automotive out there in Troy, Missouri. All right. Tom Gallardi, the owner of the Dallas Stars, man. We got billionaires what we do on this, this edition one, of the Cam and Strick podcast. Again, get your hats at CamandStrick.com. The Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by CarShield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on. And you know, right off the bat, you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle call 800-857-2481 mention the promo code cam mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code cam to save 10 percent. Yeah. that's carshield.com a deductible may apply save yourself money cam. sign up and get your coverage now cam. with carshield.com cam. now to the cam. interview Tommy. Tommy. Do you like Tom yep. or Tommy? Yeah. What, what's, we we got to say the right name. Tom. Tom. Yeah. See, not, Tom. I, I always had an EY. You know how it is. You know. 
You're it's like your hockey name. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, they call Tom Brady Tommy now, Tom, you know? So, do they? Oh, yeah. Tommy. Yeah. I don't think they do, Andy. Tommy Brady. <laughs> okay, we're just hanging out. Where are you, where are you at yeah, today? Yeah. You in uh, British, you in Vancouver? Where are you at? Yeah, Vancouver. There you go. Now, is that where you spend the majority of your time? I know you got businesses all over, but are you constantly on the move, Tom? Or on the move, Tom? Or are you just, you know, you, you kind of like transplant yourself in uh, in Vancouver and kind of stay there? Uh, well, I, I move a lot, but I, you know, I'm Vancouver is my home, so I spend the most amount of time here. And but you know, I tend to travel a lot. But uh, yeah. What about Texas? You got a place uh, down there in Texas? I do. Yeah, I've got sons going to uh, SMU in Dallas. So, um, but yeah, I've got a home in Dallas as well. I've had I've had a home for there for eleven years now. So, hey, what's the hockey background like? Is this something yeah. like you you start working, you start having success, and kind of building your fortune the way that you have? I mean, like when did when did owning a hockey team come on the radar? Is this something you always wanted to do? Um, I think. I think uh, about uh, nearly 20 years ago, I kind of thought um, that that it might be something I wanted to do, and so uh, you know I had a really hard look at the at the Canucks uh, in the early 2000s, and then and then I you know I think I realized that hey I can do this I uh, I, I think I'm gonna I'd be good at it, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. So you know I first bought a Western Hockey League team. And uh, around uh, 2007, and then, you know, stayed in contact with with Gary Bettman and waited my waited my turn. And it, lucky for me, a, a good team, you know, popped up at, at, in in the Dallas Stars and and uh, one that was kind of close to me because my mother's a Texan and I've got family there, and so I'd spent lots of time in Texas growing up. So it it just was a really good fit, and uh, you know, luckily it all came together. So how'd you get into hockey as a kid? Um, you know, did you play it? Were you just a big fan? Oh no, I played hockey. Yeah, played hockey, and I really only stopped playing about seven, eight years ago. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, when I when I started to coach my sons um, and get more involved in that, it just it there just wasn't enough time and 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 the travel and the like, and so I just wasn't making many games and and you know the bunch of guys I was playing with at that point. I think we all we you just all get busy, and then every year you you drop a guy or two, and then all of a sudden you're sitting sitting in the change room and you're looking around, and half the guys you don't know or like, and you know, and then <laughs> and, and, they and, annoy and, you. and and you're down, yeah, you know, you're down to like three or four guys that you really like, and it used to be you know twelve, right? So, and then you just think, gosh, I've I've kind of done this, and I was busy coaching, and you know, my kids all played uh, played hockey and played spring hockey, and that, that wears you down. There's only so much time. No, I get it, man. And one of those guys that you don't know, like, trips you up on a breakaway or something, you fall into the boards and get hurt and piss at everybody. Oh, I've been there. Trust <laughs> hey, me, Tom. Listen, yeah, I, right. uh, Tom, I played this morning at 6.30. You want to hear about my performance? No, today? Andy, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> I wasn't very good, actually. I'm still, like, breathing hard. But, uh, but I'm telling you, just from, like, being out there today, I kind of – I'm buzzing today. I feel good. You yeah, know, well, you got a lot of yeah, energy. Your endorphins going. From getting the uh, workout earlier today. So, hey, I'm curious, though, like, when yeah. you have interest in hockey, is Gary calling you? Is he saying, hey, listen, we may have this team coming up because they want people like like you in the league yeah you know it's it's i've talked to gary about teams that i you know that i thought you know and and i certainly had my ear to the ground and i talked to him you know i, I recall talking to him, to him about another market you know maybe another couple markets and he said stand pat i got a team for you and and so that would i think be very interesting for you and you know the, the markets you're talking about i think i've I've got good guys, you know, so it, it was sort of like that. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, just the relationship with Gary, you know, over a few years of staying in touch. And I think, I think it paid off because he, he trusted me and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, helped me with the process. And it was, it was a tricky process the Dallas, uh, the Dallas deal with, uh, with the situation that it, it had fallen into. So it, was, it wasn't an easy deal. It took a long time to do. I got you. And listen, we've talked to other owners and, and, and I've known the ownership groups, the various ownership groups that have come through here in St. Louis, oh, just yeah. being around the team. Yeah. Everybody's different. You know, some people want to be involved 
heavily on the business side. Some people want to be heavily involved on the hockey side. So like, where, where do you fall in? Are you, are you in the meetings? Are you in the middle yeah. of it and being like, you know, I think this guy should play on the right side with so-and-so and not that <laughs> guy. Like where, where do you fall in place in terms of your, your, uh, you, you know, how much involvement you have? Well, I'm, I'm certainly, you know, aware of, of everything. And I have an opinion that, you know, I, 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 I like to have heard, but at the end of the day, I don't, want to make the decisions um you know i'm certainly not involved with who plays with who and and what the strategy of you know the coaches do i i tend to i tend to you know stay up top and talk mostly to the general manager but uh um you know it's it's i i think i'm i'm really at the end of the day uh, as much a fan as anything you know i i like to you know put jeans on and watch hockey and drink beer <laughs> and I don't want to put a suit and a tie on and I don't want to play that game. It's not what I want to do. And so it's, you know, it's, I think it's just fun to be around the league and fun to have a horse in the race and fun to have your hand on something. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I don't make decisions at the draft table. I don't make decisions on, on, uh, on, uh, on, on personnel, you know, I have an opinion, uh, but it's, it's, it's one man's opinion and, and there's a lot of opinions. So I, I would characterize it that way. What kind of beer you drink? <laughs> well, you know, it varies because you go through, you know, uh, over time, you tend to try different things out. I mean, I was you know, sort of into IPA four or five years ago. And now I can barely drink IPA. So I'm, I'm really just back to lager. So I'm really a Molson Canadian guy at the end of the day. Uh, there you go. That, I miss that, that that's, Canadian a, beer. that's a true Canadian. I right miss that there. Canadian beer. Hey, they made us a drink here in town, man. I'm going to send you some. You like those hard seltzers, Tom? I'm going to send you. It. I'm going to send you some of those. Some of the mango lemonade yeah, okay. hard seltzer. They're okay. You don't have to lie, Tom. It's all good, buddy. I, I got cases. I got cases of those given to me. So I, they're okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, you're going to get more cases. And then. Hey, yeah. you know so I'm, what? I'm into lager. I'm into yeah. lager. Okay. So I get you. We'll get you some lager. Hey, you know what? It's funny you say that. Like you just you're you're not into like the suit and tie and everything. Because when I like I, when I saw you at the draft, Tom, uh, in Montreal, I saw you go up to that podium. I'm like, this guy is coming on the podcast. We gotta get this guy on the <laughs> yeah, podcast, I man. I mean, I you, so yeah. how do you interact with all the other owners? Are, are, are do you try to make friends with those guys, or do yeah. you just come in and do your own thing and then and then leave? Uh, you know, you know, I know, you know, I've got to chat with uh, a lot of the owners and, and some you never see and some you see a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that, that particular draft, it just, I didn't notice many owners there at all. Actually. I, I think there's never been fewer owners would be my observation. So, wow. but I chatted with a few. And so, you know, we're all, we're all generally friendly. Um, and some of us are pretty close and talk quite a bit. So uh Yeah. It's because they're not vaxxed. They yeah, couldn't get to right. Canada. Yeah, you're probably right on that. No, <laughs> I know. Right on that. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I don't know whether, I, I mean, by that point, crossing the border wasn't that tough a deal. I just, you know, I just thought for for the first in-person draft, it was the fewest owners I'd seen. Yeah. And so for whatever reason, I don't know. But, you know, most of the owners are great guys, and and uh, it's it's a good group. And, and uh, uh, you know, having said that, we, we, we want to win all the time. So, you know, I hate. There's 31 teams in the league that I hate, so that's the way it works. <laughs> hey, don't let that Tom Dungeon outdress yeah. you, but he, he goes up there in tennis shoes. He thinks he's a cowboy. Don't he? <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves it. He's a Dallas guy. Hey, how was your upbringing? How, were you close to your mom and dad? I mean, you know, like explain that whole uh, process. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I you know, our, our business uh, was, you know, started by my father, so I worked with him for – you know, since uh, as a teenager working in, you know, various parts of the business, go to university, come out, join the, join the company and work pretty closely with them. And, and uh, you know, always close with my mom as well. So I lived at home, lived at home until I was, oh boy, you know, 22 maybe. So it was, it was, it was pretty cushy there. It wasn't, wasn't anxious to leave, but at some point you, you got to leave, but, uh, yeah, no good parents are they're still, uh, they're still in Vancouver with me here. And I live, I live quite close to, uh, you know, pretty close to my mom. I know. So, hey, uh, yeah. 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 Eventually you got to get out of the house, Tom. Yeah. I, I know it is cushy. Well, well, let me ask you though. Nobody <clears throat> wants to leave. Were you, were you close with your dad? Like, was he tough on you? I know he's a businessman. Like what did he, did you learn a lot from him? Did you pick his brain? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I learned, uh, I learned a ton from him, you know, working with him and then, 
you know, and yeah, it was good. It was a good upbringing. And I, you know, I got my own sort of areas to focus on and run and, you know, got a lot of autonomy and, and as I got older. And so I have no complaints about, uh, about the, you know, the career I was afforded and, and, and where it's gone. So, um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, the biggest, the biggest, uh, um, you know, you know, role model in, in my business life would be my father for sure. You know, I was talking to people who know you pretty well and I do my world-class research, Tom. And then they kind of said, Hey, don't, <laughs> don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be fooled by the fact that, you know, his grandfather was a big time yeah, politician yeah, and your dad started the business. I mean, you really took the business to the next yeah. level. And it wasn't, I mean, I know you were probably, listen, you got in the door, you had a great opportunity because of your family. There's no question about that, but explain you know, what your approach was and what you've been able to do to take your business to where it is today. Well, I, I, I think, I, I think that I just had a, you know, a natural burn to want to want to make a difference and really move the needle. And, um, and so I wanted to be part of that. And, and, uh, I, I was just kind of, you know, born that way, I suppose. So, um, you know, it's nice to hear that, that people think that, um, you know, at it, the it, end of the day, it's, it, our company has grown, you know, immensely um, over the last 25, 30 years. And, you know, I like to think I've got a pretty big hand in that. And, um, and uh, you know, I've been the CEO now for, for quite a while. And, and so uh, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, I, I just, I just wanted to make a difference and, uh, and, and accomplish something. I was given a pretty good head start and a really good opportunity. And then given the, oppor- you know, obviously the opportunity to, to really do something and, and uh, carve it the way I thought it could be carved and, and, and built up. So, um, yeah, here I am. Okay. Yeah. So explain for people who may not know, cause I mean, there's listeners who are listening right now who certainly know your story and a lot of people who don't. Yeah. So you, you've got this Northland properties. Like what does that entail? Because I know about <clears> the <throat> hockey teams you have under it with the, with the Texas stars, the Kamloops blazers. And then of course, um, you know, the Dallas stars, but, but it's much more than that with restaurants and hotels. Like how many hotels and restaurants are we talking? Um, there's, so Northland is the, is the, you know, parent company for a bunch of businesses and, in uh, hotels, uh, you know, restaurants, resorts, real estate development, capital, um, uh, and so uh, the restaurants in our group. I think there's about 175 of them now, and uh, we're we're about 60 odd hotels as well, with a lot of a lot of growth on the horizon. So it's it's a good sized business. You know, I, uh, playing here in St. Louis and growing up in St. Louis, a lot of my buddies own restaurants, you know, and I just see the ups and downs <clears throat> and the pain in the ass that they have to deal with from, you know, to trustworthy, having trustworthy people running the show and you can't always be there. Like, what's, like, running this business? It's like, what, what how'd you keep them going? I mean, like, there's so many different variables that go with it. Like, it, it's, it's very difficult. Like, what's your, uh, what's your secret to keeping everything successful with them? Well, you got to hire great people. And, and, you know, you've got to create the right culture and, and you've got to create, you know, um, um, g- give people, uh, you know, room to, uh, to grow and, 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 and autonomy because the best people don't want to be overmanaged. And, uh, you know, if you want to overmanage people, then they're going to go work somewhere else. And so you want the best talent and that's what it's all about. You know, the, the restaurant industry is the easily the hardest industry, you know, business, you know, we're in. It's, it is a super tough business, uh, you know, but if you're good at it, you can do very well. But it's, you know, if I were to, if I were to make one change uh, many years ago, it's maybe not an industry I would have gone into as heavily as I have, because it, it is just a lot of, a lot of work. But, you know, having said that, it's very rewarding and it enhances big pieces of our company and it makes our hotels better when you have great restaurants as well. So yeah. it's, it's yep. been part of, part of the recipe for success, but it is, it is a tough industry. And, you know, the failure rates are, are obviously very high and it's uh, management intensive and it can fall apart in a hurry, you know, especially with, with um, the internet today and social media, you know, if you, yeah. you lose your way, it's, it, you get carved pretty fast and pretty hard oh, and it spreads yeah. pretty hard. So, yeah, so yeah. it's tough does, business. Does um, that happen sometimes yeah. though? Like just like maybe a re- like one of the restaurants, somebody wasn't 
when they weren't on their game. Oh, they put that review on. They're the... in a pissy mood, <laughs> and they put that re- somebody, and they put a review up, and it kind of blows up. Like, is that like how do you? I, I it's always going to happen, but like one review can kind of screw things up big time. Um. Yeah, it, it can, you know, because they, they, you have to deal with them. And, you know, you get a bad review, you've got to get a hold of that person and circle back and, and make it right. So, you know, hopefully you make it right when something goes wrong. It all comes down to management, confident yeah. management. You know, if something goes wrong, you know, your guys should know about it and, and have it fixed before that guest even leaves the building and has a chance to sit down and, and write something. But, you know, you have to, that's things you have to deal with. You know, our managers spend a lot of time managing their, their, their social media presence and what people are saying about them. And, you know, we've got to respond to all of them and we've got to people to say bad things about us. We've got to get a hold of them and we've got to make it right and fix it. So it's a big part of the job. You know, that didn't exist 15, 10, 15 years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah. yeah I know. So yeah. it just made it, it made it difficult, you know, business even more difficult. Cam knows all about the bad reviews. I, sometimes he's got to go on the uh, yeah, sometimes on I the go defense. On the, yeah, I got I to defend myself on this podcast once in a long time. So I get you. But, oh, but, yeah, well, but they, hey, I bring the heat, man. Hey, That's why we're successful. When they put those reviews out there. Hey, <laughs> how do you look at um, owning an NHL team versus like the other businesses? Like like at the end of the day, like I had an owner tell me a long time ago, at the end of the day, an NHL franchise is kind of like a small business. I mean, do you look at it as a big business, small business? I mean, you talk about surrounding yourself with good people and hiring good mm-hmm. people. I mean, that's never been truer in professional sports. You better have good people that are working for yeah, you. Right. Otherwise, you're not having success. We all know that. <clears throat> so so how do you look at, uh, you know, running an NHL team versus your other businesses? I mean, does, does the business mindset change or no? Well, I think I think that's what I've, you know, what I've learned about many years ago, thought that hockey would be a natural fit uh, for, for me to manage. I mean, we have – we have individual hotels with more employees than, you know, the, the Dallas stars, for instance. So, oh, yeah. you, so, you know, I, I think a, an NHL team is a, is a, is a pretty big business in its own right. Um, uh, but it's, it's actually very similar to, to the hospitality business and in the hotel business too, because you have a, you have a, you're selling an inventory that expires daily in hotels and you're selling, you know, tickets, which expire daily as well. Um, you know, game by game. So you're selling something, uh, you have to promote and produce and, and provide a great product. And so, um, and, and so there's, there's just lots of similarities and it, and it feels like the skill sets that, that we employ throughout our business are, are similar to, 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 to hockey. So, uh, it's, it really is, uh, similar. I think the only, the only difference is you've got a, you know, circus act on the ice with, with lines you have to hire and, and pay, you know, crazy amounts of money. And that's sort of a new, a new, uh, a new rate call. And that's part of, you know, what you're offering, obviously when you're trying to sell tickets and sponsorships and the like, you've got to have a good, a good circus product on the ice. And uh, sometimes that's easier said than, than done. Hey, it's of all the cool things you got going. I mean, like owning a junior team and Andy and I were just talking about the, the other day, like I played juniors in Windsor. I'm a Eureka boy out here in the middle of Missouri going up to Canada and seeing that atmosphere, like, that's got to be pretty cool. You know, not paying out salaries. It's just like an easier gig. And I don't know. I could just, <clears throat> if I had a little bit of money, I would love to own a junior team. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, it's really fun. And it's funny, the number of people that contacted me about about my junior team after I bought the Stars, you know, say, oh, you, you know, you're obviously, you know, going to be in the market. I'd love to buy your team. And, and uh you know, I never, I never thought about that for a second. I, you know, I love, love junior hockey. I think, I think the role we provide in the, in the hockey landscape and development of players is, is really uh, rewarding and, and really fun. And it, yes, it's nice not to have to worry about what you pay somebody and what their contract is and, and the like. And same time too, you've got to draft and develop the same way you do an NHL club to have a great product on the ice. And it tends to be cyclical, as you know, um, but it's a it's a great uh, it's a great business to be a part of, and the Western Hockey League is a, is a solid entity, and and uh, you know really excited to be the host of the uh, 2023 uh, Memorial Cup oh, yeah. in, uh, in Kamloops next year. Hardest trophy yeah. to win, Andy. Right hey, there, I, baby. I got I got a buddy of mine out here, out here who just bought the Portland uh, Winterhawks, man. Oh. So uh, he's he's oh. not he's not part of the group over there. Hey, but you know, listen, I got to pump your tires here, Tom, because. I know you've got like Shane Doan and Aginla and Daryl Sador. I think Recky, who's also involved with Kamloops. But 
Yeah. This legacy foundation that you have there, man, and it impacts not just the team in terms of, you know, uh, your impact overall, but like helping kids, helping, you know, other sports outside of just hockey, helping the community. I mean, from what I understand, man, it's a big deal, and you should be really proud of that, you know? Yeah, it was cool. It was the way that it was the byproduct of, of buying the team from the community of, you know, of, of the, the idea that, hey, this money could be better. You know, a community owns this team worth all this money, and it's, but you're not providing any benefit to the community. So why don't we buy the team? We take the money and create a, create a fund that could, could, could support, um, you know, sports generally and, and counts and the, the amount of work that's been done in the last since 2007, as you, as you point out, it's been incredible. So, and uh, there was just no reason for the community on the team. It should be in private hands and let private guys uh, manage it. And, uh, and uh, so I think it's been a win-win for the community for sure. So do all those guys, are all those guys part owners like, like Don and, and again, <clears throat> and Sid and all these guys, are they all part owners with you? Yeah. Yeah. Jerome, uh, Shane, Daryl Sador, Mark Recchi, who are all alumni, and we bought the team together, and and uh, yeah, so they're 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 great guys. They're they're all uh, interested and and you know involved to a to the extent that they each want to and have time for. It. Uh, Daryl's the only one that lives in the in in Kamloops, so but the other guys are all over the place. So, uh, but now Jerome's got a kid playing in the. Western Hockey League next year, so he will oh, be. Uh, how sick is he? Be pretty, uh, is he? Is he like his dad? Is he like his daddy? <laughs> uh, we'll see. He's a good. He's a good little player. We'll see. Hey, nice one timer. Uh, he's got big. He's got big shoes to fill, though. That's for oh sure. yeah. Those guys know nothing about hockey, by the way. Oh. You, you have a terrible ownership group over there, Tom. <laughs> no, I know. I know. There's no hockey experience in there. You got about five thousand career Louise. games played. I played with Sid. He was a good Some dude. Some Hall of yeah. Famers. Oh, yeah. They oh, all yeah. dominate that. They're all, they're, all, they're all great guys. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. No they're doubt about it. We, we've had a couple of yeah. them on with us, yeah. man. They are. Yeah, they, they are great. They are hey, great. can I ask you a question? And I'm not a journalist, but I'm just curious. You got all these places, these hotels, these resorts. Like, when you want to kick your feet up and go on a vacation, like, are you staying in one of your places? Like, what's your go-to? <laughs> um... Yeah, sometimes, you know, like I, we go to the Kootenays, 12 guys and stay in one of our hotels and play, play golf and, and really just kind of a rugged area. That's, that's nice. Um, uh, a couple of weeks I'll be in Dublin playing and playing on a course that, you know, that I bought there and I'm staying in our hotel on the sea. So I have both ways, you know, I mean, I, I would say that generally if I want to get away and relax, I, 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 I wouldn't stay at one of our places, but you know, I often do. So golf's my, uh, my escape. Uh, I was going to ask you, Dublin, dude. Oh, man, I played over there in, in Nottingham, you know, traveled up there. Just absolutely beautiful. Like, God, you, so you go out to Dublin a lot and kind of chill out, play on your course, do your thing out there in Be- yes. Beautyville. How many courses do you have? Uh, part of uh, two, and then a third one under construction in Revelstoke at our resort. I love how you had to think about I it. Know. You know, he's like, oh, let me add them up in my head. How many courses I had. Oh. Next time we do this well, interview, Tom, we're doing really, it on the only... course. So there you go. <laughs> are you any good at golf? Like, are you, are you consistent? Because you're probably playing with some big dogs, and you know how that is, man. <clears throat> there are a lot of guys, a lot of these athletes you're probably hanging out with, too. Like, they all could play. Like, are you decent? I'm an eight index. And, you know, I've been low as a... Cam doesn't as know what five. that means. Oh, I know what it is. It's all good. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm okay, but, I mean, I have to... The problem is I don't hit the ball as far. And, you know, if I play with these hockey guys, they all hit it, you know, 300 yards and stuff. So I have to I have to scramble like crazy. And, and so, luckily, I've got a... My short game's my, my, uh, my strength. So, you know, I hang in there, but... Uh, um, but it's hard to play when you're playing with guys who are, you know, 70, 80 yards past you off the tee. Hey, you, have to, you have to outsmart them. I know. Exactly. I know. There's, there's some truth to that. Hey, listen, uh, did the NFL ever interest you? I know you're Canadian and, like, you're a big hockey guy. But, like, how much crossover and interaction do you have with Jerry Jones over there in Dallas? Like, are you guys getting together? Are you picking each other's brain? Or does he just kind of do his thing and you do your thing? Yeah, I you know I know that I know I know Stephen Jones and spent some time with him. They're 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 really neat people, and so um, you know I've had some 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 nice chats with with them. And you know obviously 
amazed at what they've done. I mean, they are really, 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 really good at owning that team and uh, have created a, a ton of value. And um, uh, yeah, so it's been a pretty impressive how they've managed the team and certainly, you know, watched about some of the things they've done and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, they're nice guys. And, and uh, um, I, I've never really thought about owning it an NFL team. I, I think that I've certainly been, I've certainly, you know, seen opportunities to get involved with other leagues, but I, at, at the end of the day, I think if you're not emotionally invested in owning your team, then you shouldn't own it. And uh, there's only so much room you have in, you know, in your, in your, in your, in, you know, in your life to, to do that. So I don't know how you do multiple sports. I, I, I think, you know, these, these hockey teams occupy a, a lot of your, you know, your emotional bandwidth, you know? And so uh, I just don't know how, how you'd have any time to, to really focus on some other sport. Um, so I've, I've capped it off. I mean, it, my brother lives in the UK, you know, we talked about buying a, a, you know, soccer team over there and, but it just comes down to the same, same issue that, you know, what, when would I ever have time, you know, even just to go there emotionally be part of it. And, uh, you know, really give really give the club what it deserves to have, which is a you know a passionate owner who cares, who's prepared to who's prepared to spend and invest in the areas you need to do to try to make a difference to to get an edge on someone else. So um, thought about it, but not uh, basically close the door on any other on not any other buys. Hey, listen, we'll, we'll, I got a lot of hockey questions for you. So does Cam. So we'll, we'll we'll move into that. But I'm curious though, COVID. <clears throat> I mean, in the hospitality industry, yeah. man, I could only imagine the restaurants, yeah. the hotels what that did to you, especially up in Canada. Like how oh. frustrated were you with what was going on up there? Well, I just, the, the world, I mean, it was very frustrating that, um, that, you know, that, that, well, the virus was obviously what it was. And I, you know, I think history will be very unkind to, uh, to the way that certain governments managed through it. So it was very frustrating to be part of a part of it. But, uh, you know, I think, I think lots of lessons learned. I mean, I think you learn things during crises. I think you find different ways to do things that you didn't know you could do. Uh, I think that there's, yeah, there's, there's just, there, there's, there's just always something good. And that's the way you have to look at it. You know, um, I, I think complaining about COVID is, is it was, it was obviously tough, you know, for the business and, and all that, but, you know, we came through it fine. And uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that lost their lives with this uh, with this virus. And, you know, uh, I guess we'll be thankful we're, we're through it and we could be in a lot worse shape than we are. And uh, I look at what's happening around the world and places like Ukraine and, and uh, all the stuff going on. It's, uh, we're lucky to be here and we're lucky to have the problems we have. Yeah, I hear you with that, man. I hear you with that. Hey, what's your outlook for the Dallas Stars now moving forward? You guys have had a lot of coaches, though. I will say that, Tom. Hey, you've had a lot of coaches there recently. Some, you know, your choice. Some, you know, obviously some, some, you know, different circumstances that led to coaches moving on and stuff like that. But you got Pete DeBoer coming in. Oh, Petey. Cam's old coach uh, with the Devils back in the day. Like, what's your, what's your, uh, you know, outlook moving forward here into this year and, and, and trying to get this team, you know, back to where they were just a few years ago. As people forget you guys were in the Stanley cup final in that bubble back in 2020. Yeah. I, I think that it was, you know, we had a decision to make with, uh, with Rick. Um, and, and I think there was just a bunch of metrics with our team that we, we didn't like. And, <clears throat> and, you know, I think Rick did a wonderful job, of getting that club into the playoffs with, with, um, you know, we had some sketchy goaltending throughout the season. Um, and so our, you know, defensive numbers weren't where, where we're used to being. And I think, I think some of that is on, is on the goaltending and some of that is just on, I, I think the message, I think that, I think it's, it's hard. I, I think it's hard for players to play more than three, four years for coaches in most instances. I mean, there's examples of coaches that, that have had success, you know, for longer. And, and certainly I hope Pete has lots of success for a long time. Um, but it's it just, it's the, it's really the measure of kids today. You know, I, they, they, they don't have the attention spans and I just don't think you see coaches with 10, 12 year careers, uh, the same team. So, um, you know, other than we had the two blips with Hitchcock and with, um, 
obviously Jim uh, Montgomery, but uh, you know the Montgomery thing was out of our control, and yeah. uh, and that is what it what it was. And and uh, and Hitch, you know, I know that the media likes to say that was my decision to hire Hitch. And that's it's just it's just not true. Uh, I had a I had uh, he was a guy that I was very interested in in getting, and we we made the decision to bring in Hitch to change the identity of the team and thought he was our best chance to do that. And that's exactly what Hitch did. So people might say, well, he's only one year. It wasn't successful. It was a mistake. Uh, it absolutely was not a mistake. We came out of the Lindy rough years. We were 31st in def- team defense. We uh, Hitch brought us in, into number six and Monty stepped into that position and benefited from all the work that Hitch put into the club to change our identity. And, you know, we just believe that if we're going to have any success in the playoffs, uh, we have to be able to defend and we have to be a top, you know, top five uh, defensive team. And that's exactly what we became. And we've been that every year until this past year where, as I mentioned, some of our metrics went the wrong way. But the metrics that we, we really just couldn't live with was was, was our, off, our offense and, and the types of, you know, the way we were playing and, and the way, um, you know, we were, we were 32nd and expected goals for. So there's just some really – bad metrics that we just didn't think were going to change without making a change. And so, you know, I think, and I think Rick too, you know, it was a, it was a mutual thing. Rick's just an unbelievable guy. And Rick felt that he had got everything out of the team that he could and, and, you know, really believed that uh, the team would benefit from another voice. And so, you know, that was a decision to, uh, to make the change. And, you know, we, we, uh, we really, we looked at who was out there and, and, you know, we had a long, long list of guys and we, we quickly, you know, landed on Pete being the right guy. And, um, you know, I know I got a chance to meet Pete, uh, before the decision was made to offer him the job. And it was really as good a coach interview as I've ever had. And wow. I was really oh, yeah. impressed with him. And yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a neat, a neat dude. And so I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that he can help us, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, regain some offensive punch here without losing the identity that we worked so hard to get. So um, I, I'm hopeful, you know, but having said that, we need, we need some guys to have better offensive years. We've had too many players have really poor offensive uh, output. So uh, again, another reason for the coaching change to, uh, to hopefully uh, spark something. And, you know, we need our two big guys who are uh, uh, to, you know, to have better seasons offensively. And so I, I, I think they will. Yeah, we'll get yeah, into that. Get we'll going. get into that. Yeah, there's no question. Going. I remember Hitch, by the way. I went to coffee with him, and he told me that he was taking the job in Dallas, and I kept that quiet for like several good for days. You, Andy. Did not report good for you. that. Kept that very, very quiet. So, and he did do a good <laughs> job. I'm glad you pointed that out. In 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 one year, he yeah. did. You know, that's what he can do, man. Yeah. He can certainly coach. And the the issue with your goaltending that year with injuries down the I stretch know. really hurt you, and it hurt him. So, um, but the Monty situation. Yeah, man, we lost. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. I yeah. think Hitch it would help the. Without the injuries, uh, I think Hitch, we would have made the playoffs that year under Hitch. I thought he got got unlucky there, and uh, and our goaltending fell apart at the end as well. So, uh, but Hitch did a good job, and and it but it, it turned out that it was really what was best for our club was was for Hitch to go, and one year was what we needed, and we 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 went into Jim Montgomery, and under Jim, you know, we had a our, we were we were pretty good. I mean, we lost uh, to to the Blues in that seven game overtime. Yeah. Uh, series and and so but we were on our way felt really good about it and uh uh and, and but that's an identity we want we, we just it's so important to keep for us and so um uh but but having said that we we need more offense and we need more, we need to create more and that's uh that's what we expect pete to do yeah, i guess you probably couldn't consider bringing money back i mean there's too much baggage there and and too much it, it would be difficult to do we just had him on. right and we just had him on and listen no money for a long time we love him and listen, he had his issues, but but I will say, man, this guy was unbelievable here in St. Louis, and, and I'm not surprised to see him land and get a head coaching job, you know, as fast as he has, and he's back in Boston. But, you know, I just look at the Dallas Stars, man, and where you guys were headed when you had him, and, I mean, how do you reflect on that situation, just not being able to take advantage of having a coach like him with your organization and, you know, so your team could have grown with him, you know. I, the situation was out of your control. I get it. Yeah. But he's a hell of a coach, man, and the guys absolutely love him, at least here. Yeah, no, he's uh, he, he did a good job. Um, uh, but I think, you know, once, once you know, when, w- with what happened, that, that bridge gets burned. And so um, yeah. there was never any discussion about bringing him on back. But, 
um, you know, I, he's a good coach. And so I don't need to tell you that you got, you watched him, uh, in St. Louis the past couple of years. So, uh, we'll see how he does in Boston. Yeah, for sure. All right. You mentioned, uh, Jamie Benn yeah, and Tyler yeah. Sagan. Yeah. Man, you know, it's yeah. interesting because you think about like the great duos in the NHL, you know, the, 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 the names, right. The iconic names, the Taves and Kane, the, the Crosby's and Malkins, you know, people mention like, you know, Ben and Sagan and Dallas, they've been there for so long. But they're making so much money, man. I mean, combined, yeah. I think over twenty million bucks, and combined less than a hundred points last season from two of your top players, man. I know they're getting older and whatever, but how do you look at it? Because one thing you can't do when you're an owner or a coach, Tom, you can never predict when that offense is going to fall off. Yeah. You just have no idea when it's going to happen. So, you know, can can they get it back? Is the question. Like, can they can they rediscover that offense that they showed earlier in their career that got them the contracts that they're playing under now? Well, yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, you know, when you sign contracts, you have to, uh, you have to earn, you know, earn that. I mean, you, you're taking the two guys are taking, you know, one quarter of the cap space of the team and, and, uh, you know, the, both of them aren't producing, uh, enough for that. And, and you know what, they're, they're, they're responsible guys and they know that and they feel it and they should feel it. And so, uh, you know, I expect, I expect, uh, I expect them to, uh, to step up and get better. I mean, I, I think with Tyler, he's had, he's had some injuries and, you know, the types of things he's gone through, it, it's taken some really good players around the league, you know, a year or so to get over that and come back out of it. I mean, you look, I think about a guy like Stamkos, similar injury, similar um, uh, surgery. And, you know, if you remember, he came out of that, he, he wasn't that great a player, you know, he just, and then, but, but then look at him now. So, you know, I think Tyler will, will hopefully come out of this and, and be a lot stronger. And, you know, he just wasn't hundred percent, hasn't been hundred percent for a while. And uh, so I, I think physically that that's hurt him. And, and, you know, he's got to find that, that different thing, you know, with Jamie's not scoring, Jamie still does a lot for the club. Yeah. I got I mean, you. He's, uh, yeah, we he's love our him leader. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a, he's a, you know, he, as much as people say, Oh, well, you know he's not earning his contract. If you put you put him on the market, there'd be oh, there'd be yeah. two dozen teams that would want to acquire him for what for all the other stuff that he does. So you know we need him to score more on our team. We're we're a bit scoring challenged at the last couple of years, and so we need him to score more. But uh, we also need what the other stuff that he brings, and so and he's been bringing that. So uh, competitive guy, you know he's our leader, and and uh, we just we're just going to need a bit more offense out of him and. You know he knows that. I think he's you know, he's trained differently this this summer and uh, and uh, needs to get a bit quicker and and uh, which I think he'll do. Yeah, and, and in fairness, so I, I, I think I Tyler think finished the season strong, didn't he? Last year he scored some goals down the stretch. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he did. Uh, he got better as the season went on. He got stronger and I think recovering from from what he went through. So, um, but I, I think I think there's going to be some systems changes with. Uh, you know, with the way we play that are, that it's going to lead to more offense. And so I, I think as much as people might be down on Tyler and Jamie for what they've, what they've done, I think part of that is just the way we've played and uh, the way we're, you know, the, the, the bit of our strategy, which, which is what, what we really believe needed to change and, you know, hence the coaching change. So I think, I think that'll help them as well. Let me ask you something, Tom, like, you know, you see how people, you know, playing in Canada, you have the spotlight on you. You got people you can't go anywhere. But every time I talk to people that play in Dallas, and every time you watch Dallas and seeing the city and knowing the city, and just like this, there's so much positive for playing for the Stars. Like, what's it like for a player there? I mean, can they walk around town? Do they get enough attention? Is it like a perfect balance? Not to mention there's beautiful women everywhere. Like, it's just it just seems like a cool place to play without being – in a bubble, kind of explain that to people. It's it's a really great place for that because, as you say, they have they have enough on anonymity, and for whatever reason, Dallas fans are really respectful of of the players, so they can go anywhere they want without any trouble. And if you talk to, I mean, I remember I remember Jerome playing in, in Calgary. I mean, he couldn't he couldn't go to the grocery store. I know. So. Um, it's a different experience. And so Dallas is a sought after place. I mean, it's uh, great weather. It's cheap to live, no state income tax. Um, players love to love to play there. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of, most players seem to settle their after their careers are over as well. So it's a very desirable place to, 
to live and and uh, and the players are rec- their players are recognized. It's not that they're not recognized. They're just their space seems to be respected, and yeah. so it's it, it, the town is full of cow- old cowboys, Mavericks, yeah. um, and uh, sports guys like it there. So it's the right it's the right balance of uh, of, of those things. Okay, so how do you look at contracts in the NHL today? Because you know. It wasn't too long ago where you know, kind of had to establish yourself before you got paid the big time money. Now these kids coming out of entry level contracts, man, they're getting they're getting paid big time money as well. And you got a couple of young guys there, and Jason Robertson, and uh, and of course Ottinger, your goaltender. I mean, how do you look at that? Because you've rewarded the veteran guys. Do you do you feel comfortable handing it over to a young guy? How do you approach it? Well, I, I, at the end of the day, there's a you know we have a salary cap, and we have to operate within that. And you know, the two, there's two big things that have changed. I think in the last few years, is the, you know the absence of the second contract, and so you know, a uh, kid kid in the third year of his entry level puts up 40 goals. Now he now he wants to make seven million. So, and you know, if you want term with that player, he's going to take you higher than that. So, so that's a big change. And you know what what's really happening is the stars are taking all the money and the guys in the middle uh, are getting squeezed. Mm. So the, you know, the differences are, you know, the veterans, the veterans who don't score a lot are getting squeezed. And uh, you know, I don't like it. Um, I think there's a lot of players in the league making a million dollars who are, who are better players. And, and, and then the, the guys who can put the puck in the net uh, are getting, are getting, uh, you know, too big, too big a piece of the pie, but it's a market at the end of the day. And, you know, if uh, that's what teams are doing, we're paying, we're paying, uh, we've got rid of, there's no second contracts and the second contracts are obviously short and bridges and things, but you know, the old days you used to sign like Jamie Ben comes out of entry level. He signs, you know, six years at 5 million. Mm-hmm. Well, those things, those now seem to be gone and uh, we're right into, right into the big deals with, uh, with these kids. So, um, and it was just takes the money away from the veterans and the other guys who've gotten squeezed. So, I don't like it, but that's the market and that's the way it works. And, uh, it's really just a, it's a free market, if you will. I mean, um, yeah, but you know, what's even worse is having to give like a 30 year old an eight year deal yeah. at 8 million bucks. Yeah. Right. I mean, isn't that hard to do too, Tom? <clears throat> well, yeah, it, it really is. I mean, we had, we had a, obviously Klingberg just went through that first time with John Klingberg. So, um, you know, I think that, that, that's the, that's the, that's the problem with the, with the market. I mean, I, if I could change one thing, it would be the length of contract. And, um, you know, imagine if the seven years for a free agent and eight years for your own team or four years and five years, for instance, I think we'd have a way better league. And, uh, because I think these long-term deals are really not even in the interest of the of the players. But mm-hmm. um, that would be the one thing I would say that if I could change one thing about our current system, I would I would I would reduce the terms because I think I don't think anybody's winning with those long terms. Yeah, no, I'm with you and, there, man. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, man, it's kind of crazy because the young guys are getting paid, like you said. Veteran stars are still getting paid, yeah. but there's a lot of good players that are being squeezed in the middle. In the middle. Hey, I want to get back to Ben and Sagan real quick because I meant to follow it up with this and I forgot to ask. But, you know, as an owner, and, and you got guys, man, these are your go-to guys. That's the face of your franchise. And if they're not performing up to the level of expectation, like, are you going to have a conversation with them? Will you talk to them? Will you pull them aside? And, and not only talk to them, but are you going to be honest with them? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, these you know these guys have been here a long time. I, I know them well. There's there's we have conversations. Uh, I would say I wouldn't say often. I'm not a guy who talks to the players a whole lot, but the conversations tend to be uh, you know in the off season. Uh, but yeah, I mean between the coach and the GM and but these guys know. I mean they they know you know uh, if they're happy with their play or not. I don't think it really lends a lot if somebody like me brings it up but um but uh you know yeah they're 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 proud competitive guys and uh you know it's it's they want to have better results and and uh, they know they need to have better results and i think they will have better results so um yeah Tom, this isn't going to go out for another week or two, so you can tell us. Well, 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 are, are Robertson and Ottinger, are they close to getting signed? Is anything happening there? Is that is that close to getting done? 
Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. No. Okay. I wouldn't say that, but I'm not, I'm not really on the front line of the, of the conversations, but you know, these things tend to, you know, you're an RFA, there's really no deadline, there's no hurry. And that's kind of how things go. And then you get into, um, into, um, um, arb- arbitration season and then all the agents kind of go quiet. So, you know, they've all got arb cases that are, that are, you know, that are pressing. You're either, you're either making a deal before your hearing or you're going through the hearing and you got to prepare. So pretty typical that agents, um, you know, go missing for a while around that time. And then, and then summer comes. And so what's the, what's, what's the, what's, what, what's the pressure on, on either side to get something done on August the 16th? And so, you know, these RFA deals, you know, will often sit and wait. That's kind of the nature of it. So, yeah. um, you know, we've got two this summer and that's the way the cookie crumbles. And, um, you know, we, we've got the cap space sitting, waiting for these guys. And, and so, you know, we're not, we're not concerned about, uh, about it. It's finding the right fit. It'll be finding the right number and the right term. And, and, uh, you know, do we go short, long, mid with each guy or whatever? I will, we'll, we'll We'll see how that all works out. So those conversations are happening. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I can't tell you that a deal is imminent, but you know, maybe one of them, maybe one of them is more imminent. I don't know. I gotcha. I gotcha. Hey, listen, I mean, you look at uh, teams like Florida, Vegas, I mean, they, 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 they do these contracts, man. And they, they, they just pack in the signing bonus money, you know, and you know, Colorado is starting to do it a little bit. And I'm talking about these States that don't have the state tax. You're, you're in the same situation there in Texas, uh, in Dallas, like how do you how do you look at signing bonuses and no move clauses in these contracts, man? That can sometimes handcuff uh, an owner or a team with a no move clause. But do you have problems, you know, throwing out the the bonus money? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I understand your question. I mean, bonus money is only for our veterans over. No, I mean like so, signing bonuses. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's just it. it I think the idea is uh, that uh, that uh, that owners use signing bonuses as a tool to, in their own minds, to to, to buy down the uh, the AAV of a deal. And so, you know, whether it's front loaded, paid in salary, or paid in signing bonus, is really is really irrelevant. Um, so, I, each team has their own policies of how they go about it. Yeah. And so, you know, we've done signing bonuses in the past. We've got a, we've, you know, developed our own internal policy of what we're prepared to do moving forward. Um, so, you know, to each club their own, I, I, I think, you know, to the extent that you can, you can prepay and, you know, front load deals, I think players figure that they have that money to invest. So it helps, it helps, you know, it helps bring, bring down the delta between the, the bid and the ask, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And what about like no move clauses? And, and is there an advantage to be in a state where there's no stake in income t- tax? I mean, do you feel like players are more interested in playing in those, in those states? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's states like Missouri that, that have, that have low state income tax. Right. So, yeah. They need to go to the times so though. <laughs> they need to attract What's people. That? They need to attract people to Missouri. You know, they're not doing enough of that. Right. Go ahead. Well, what about yeah. what about anyway, the no so move clause? It's yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely, it's absolutely an advantage to have a to have a team. Yeah, it, it, I, I believe it is. But at the same time, too, uh, the agents don't. You know, they pretend they don't care. And so and so got this much money in Montreal, so this guy should be getting this much money in Dallas. And we'll say, yeah, but you know, he's paying fourteen percent more tax in Montreal than Dallas. I'm just using a mark, picking a market on the sky. Mm -hmm. And so does it help? You think it helps? Does it help? I don't know. I think it does, but does it? I don't know. Um, So yeah, no, there's no question. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No movement clauses are just what are are just what you negotiate. Right. So, you know, the higher profile the player, the the more they can ask for and typically the more they get. So uh, I, I think they're pretty, they're pretty overrated. You know, I think at the end of the day, if, you know, you, these things get put into deals, but at the end of the day, if a club doesn't want a player, you know, there's, there's not many players that, that want to stay in that situation anyway. So somebody can have a no move clause. At the end of the day, if the, if the, if the club doesn't want the player anymore, you tell the player, you know, they, they'll figure it out and something gets done, you know? So you, you see that around the league. There's, you look at I me, mean, the only time I've, I mean, when's the last dad enough thing we've seen happen where the player says, well, no, I don't want to go. And so, 
you know, that lasted for all of a third of a season and then kaboom, you know, he, he agrees to go. So um, I don't think they're as big a deal as media makes them out to be. Ottawa messed that up, by the way. I asked the league. I said, who's, who's at fault here? Is it Ottawa or Vegas? They told me Ottawa, Tom. So, I mean, Ottawa didn't reveal something. I don't know exactly what went down. Although we just had the GM from the Vegas Golden Knights yeah. on, and he kind of he kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, hey, listen, there's been, like, a little bit of a rumor floating around. So I don't want to, like, have any, like, uh, tampering or anything. So I'm going to be careful how I ask the question. But would Dallas be in position to add another superstar this offseason? Is that something you could do? No. Okay. No. There's been I mean, a, you guys, yeah. you guys can look, you guys can look at the cap situation. Yeah, I know. I'm so, seeing it. You still have to get get a couple of guys signed too. You know. Yeah, we got two guys to sign, and that'll chew up uh, uh, all of our cap space. So, uh, I know I I hear these things. Oh, you we're after this guy, and, it, and it's like, well, how, how would that work? So, you know, the answer is, yeah. If I'm, if we're gonna bring in some other superstar, we have to move that money out. I've got a trade for you, by the way, Tom. Oh, I'll text it to you. <laughs> how yeah, you, how yeah. you how you could get this done. There's a star player in the Midwest. I'm just saying how you could bring them there, who you could move out. they got to retain some money. You know, we, we'll, we'll figure out how to make Andy. this happen here, Tom. Um, you get on it. You get at it. Okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you. Hey, listen, uh, I, I know you tried to buy the Thrashers. Hey, you're in a much better situation than, oh, than yeah. that situation. So I'm glad that it worked out the way it did. But Vancouver, like that, that had to be like maybe a dream of yours to own the Vancouver yeah. Canucks. I mean, you're in the city there. And then was the owner, the current owner of the Canucks, was he like a friend of yours, a business partner? And you guys were trying to go in at it together? Like what what happened there to where you ended up not getting the team? Uh, it's a story and it's 20 years old. And I really don't want to go into it again. So, yeah, we, we were friends. We, we pursued the thing together and I got treated very badly at, at the end of the day. But. You know, uh, that's old news now. And so um, I'm, I'm happy where I am. I mean, I own the Dallas Stars and it's, it's a market now that I've been able to learn and grow hospitality businesses into and, you know, created a whole different platform. So uh, I think it sounds funny as much as it would be nice to own your hometown team. I think that's a whole, a whole different level of, of mm-hmm. pressure and, and, uh, and I, I, I like, I like my situation. You know, I get to go down to Dallas. Uh, uh, they say it's a different platform for me. It's a different market. And I think it's a much easier, it's a much easier to market, much easier market mm-hmm. operate in. I think the, I think the Canadian market, the Canadian markets are really hard teams to own and manage. Ooh. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I, I think it is what it is. And I feel fortunate, you know, where, where I've landed. So, uh, uh, that's all that matters yeah. now. Yeah, no, that's a good Tom, answer. Tom, you're doing great. Okay, <laughs> don't listen to Andy. It's all good. You're <laughs> that's doing a great answer. answer. I wouldn't trade anything. But hey, let me ask you though. You said you, besides some of the the contract situations that you trade, and this is the last one for me, by the way. Tom, you've been great, and we appreciate you coming on. But like, what about in the game itself? You watch a lot of hockey. You're a part of it big time. Like, how do you, how do you look at the game? Is there anything that you would like for uh, maybe a change in any direction? And what what would it be? Oh. Well, might might better ask me during the season, you know. Yeah, I know. Um, Changes every year. Good question, yeah. Cam. I'm, so, I'm not a journalist, Tom. I mean, I just I so you know. I thought, you know, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, I, I I I think there's a better way to referee. I mean, I I, I mean, I got my CBA, you know, things, and and I'm, everybody has a CBA, has one or two or three CBA issues, and whether you're a player, or, you know, agent or an owner of the league, whatever. So, I, I touched on one of them for me. You know, I, I, I just wonder if there's a better way to, to, to officiate. You know, I think about the, that game we played in St. Louis where, you know, where, you know, we're up a goal and Haskin has the puck in the corner and he's, and he's sticks being held and he gets tripped and there's no call mm-hmm. and we end up losing the game. I mean, like, that just can't happen in the National Hockey League. It just can't happen. And, um, and then another, and then we got, and then they, you know, you, St. Louis scored and then, and then, a really iffy call. He's going to get penalized in the score again, and we go we go from one nothing to two one. We get nothing, and so oh, yeah. and so you know I, I I this two guy thing on the ice for me has never been comfortable. I, I've always believed it uh, that refereeing would be more successful if it's an art, not a science. And I think with two guys on the ice, we're trying to turn it into a science, and mm-hmm. I don't think it's possible. But if we want to have a science, maybe we need to have a guy you know, who's off the ice watching a monitor who can review things in real time. And 
there's just got to be a better way, in my opinion. Um, and I think the guys we got are obviously the best in the world. They're the best trained. And, and it, it's, you know, is anyone happy with officiating? You know, are, are we doing a good enough job? And at some point, we have to look at the way we're doing it. And is there a better way? And I don't have, I don't have an answer. I'm mm-hmm. just asking a question. Is, no, that's a fair is question. Is there a better way than putting four guys on the ice and doing what we're doing? Is it ever going to get any better than it is today? Or do we need to look at some other? Yeah, you know, I get you. Can, can AI do this? Can AI on a screen do it? I, I, I got to think so. I mean, how do we do this? Well, Where? Hey, baseball's thinking the same thing. I know. I mean, and you know what? Game. Listen, I I was working that game in St. Louis oh, when Dallas yeah. was there. I, I, I remember that. Rick Bonus. He was like losing his oh, shit my. on the eye, on oh, the bench. He was. He, you know, he was going crazy. And, and and he had every right to. I think the Blues ended up winning hey, in overtime. There's or something. a couple things that went down throughout that. No regulation. A regulation. Yeah. yeah, they scored on a power play or something. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. Something yeah. happened down the stretch. Hey, but Scott Mellenby, you know, who was an assistant GM in Montreal, he's now here in St. Louis. I remember him telling me years ago he had this idea where like the referee should sit in a chair on top of the glass. Like after an so ice the, rink? He goes, if you watch the game, they spend half the game trying to get out of the way. They're not even able to see what's going on behind them or they're, you know, with their peripheral or whatever because they're just trying to dodge pucks all the time. And he's like, why well, don't just have them just sit up above the glass and just I, watch the game exactly and then call that. penalties from there, you know? So maybe you should bring that up yeah. at the next Board of Governors meeting. Yeah, yeah I, just, I, just, I just think there's got to be, we we, we got to aim to do better. I, I think in our current setup, we're, we're, we're doing as good as we're going to do. Yeah. And, and I just wonder if there's a better way. So Hey, listen, because like being a billionaire and you own a hockey team, you live in Canada, I'm sure you have people coming at you all the time wanting this and wanting that. Like, how, how do you like keep to yourself and just make sure your inner circle are people that you trust and, and you know, just trying to go about your day to day and just try to be as normal as possible? You know, you, you have, you know, people that help you manage those things. And, and so, again, I, I, I'm surrounded by a bunch of great people. And so, you know, if people have ideas and, you know, silly investments and the like, it gets bounced to somebody and it gets handled. And it's not really a big, not really a big distraction, to be honest with you. So um, it's, it's, I think it's less of a distraction than you guys might think. Okay. I get you. Hey, do you have a boat? You don't have a boat, do you? Cam wants to know. I, if you, I'm he's... obsessed with my last one. We're done with you after this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. I just have a wake. I have a wake. I have a wake boat on Callens Lake where I spend chunks of my summer. Yeah, so, loveliness. Okay. Um, I get you. That's it. I get Not you. Not an ocean boat guy. Hey, listen, man. We'll be rooting for you, you been, uh Thank you again for coming on. Really, listen, I, and we do yeah. appreciate. We like yeah. talking to owners, we, man. Yeah, I we mean, get the owner. We're the only podcast to get the owners on. Just so you know. So, hey, and we appreciate yeah, that. Impressive. And 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 all the yeah. best, all the best to you uh, this coming season and with everything you have going on. And keep doing what you're doing, man. Honestly, yeah. it's real impre- you, impressive from Thanks, afar. Tom. So, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have okay. a good night. Take care. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman. And Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there, Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. Get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was Tom Gallardi, Cam, the owner of the Dallas Stars. Your takeaway. Well, we get the big dick song. Yeah, name. We get the big dick. He's basically saying that uh, Tyler Sagan wasn't healthy, that he was hurt. So he's given, and I like the Sagan, man. And he's been a good player for a long time. Low wheel. He is. He yeah, is. He's got I married. like Sagan. Yeah. And I like Jamie Benn, too. Low wheel. Damn right. So, but I think they're they're kind of on notice, though, at the same time. Yeah, you got to get shit a lot going. Of money, you make a lot like, of, you the, got good hair, but you, you got to Like, you the, the window shit. isn't, like, getting wider. It's going to close they there They had some Dallas. shots. They've got some good-ass young players with uh, high skin in. Robertson. I like that Robertson. Is he a big kid? Uh, he's not, like, overly big. Skilled as shit. Just a sniper. Well, they're missing that defenseman, too. Oh, boy, uh, went to that Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Um, Klingberg. Yeah, Klingberg. Fuck was he good, too. 10-2, and, 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 and they sign older players, man. I mean, they got Ryan Suter for three more years. Pavelski. Pavelski who can still play, though. Well, he did, but, yeah. like, any year now when you're mm-hmm. that age, it's mm-hmm. going to be a big drop-off. Yeah. But they've got some, you know, Rupe hints. Hey, they've got some oh, yeah, good I like, players. Oh, yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah. No, okay. he he gave St. Louis trouble. Yes, yes. Back in, he gave St. Louis Is trouble. Garyanov, they got him there. Gorgianov too. from Rangers, the goalie? No, that's Gorgiev. Oh. Gorgiev. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Gorgiev. Oh, yeah, okay. Garyanov. Yeah. Yeah. 
He was a player that I thought maybe would be involved in a trade if they bring on a big star player. But, you know, Gallardi tells us on the podcast here, as you just listened, that, you know, they're not in the market for a superstar. I had heard some stuff about potentially with Patrick Kane and maybe the Dallas Stars what, trying though, to get in the mix. Owning a team like Dallas, man, like you could get big boys to go there. Mm. He's got moxies, too, that restaurant. Like think, But you can get, like, big dicks to sign in yes, Dallas. Yes, you can. Like, it's just a... Dallas, Texas is kind of cool. Texas is cool. Fuck Dallas yeah. is a Dallas very is fucking cool. badass. What do you like the most about Dallas? Good looking women everywhere. There's good looking women everywhere. Great and restaurants. Could, and there's ways to make money there. Very <clears> modern. <throat> and the taxes and it just just a lot. Good old fucking cowboys down there. Woohoo! Hey, you ever I driven through some of those neighborhoods? Where? In Dallas. I mean, no. No, Andy. Just look it up online. Where, would I Where like through? Jerry Jones and Tom Dundon and those no, guys live. No, but Mark I, Cuban. How much money is there in Dallas? What? Yeah, it's a shit yeah. ton. Austin, Dallas. Mm-hmm. Austin's hot. They're having Austin's record high there. temperatures. No, this year. Austin's hot. Meaning, there's a lot of people moving to Austin. Well, great music scene. And Lake Austin. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. And it's actually a different kind of weather pattern in Austin, Texas. Yeah, but this year they're having know. record highs. I know, but the there's still like it's still like it's like a Kelowna, in a way. No, it's not. No. Meaning okay, Kelowna well, is listen, like a high of 75. In a way, no, no, here's my point, Dick. And it's up in the mountains. Dick, here's my point. <laughs> so you better come up with something else. I'll tell you right now, Kelowna meaning you're in this little valley to where it doesn't get that cold in Kelowna. And in Austin, you're in a valley to where it doesn't get that hot for the most part. You're it gets, wrong. It's like you can't even go outside. It's so damn hot right there now in the is. summertime. But usually compared to San Antonio, compared to other places, and even Dallas, Austin isn't as hot as those because I don't know. it's in a, I just it's, surrounded by mountains. Yeah, whatever. I think all of Texas. Whatever, is hot. Andy. Whatever, Andy. Whatever. Hey, it's all I good. remember being in the, in Dallas. You know, I've been in Dallas several times, Cam. Like yeah, you have. We all have. But I I went there for the draft a few years back. Stayed at the uh, Four Seasons Hotel, by the oh. way, where that PGA golf course is. Good looking women. Incredible. But I had not experienced that type of heat. In yeah, a it's long hot. ass time. Dude, it's hot in fucking Missouri, dude. Who gives a shit? It's hot here too. Hot it's it's hot everywhere. everywhere. Man. I know. But it won't be up in the mountains in Colorado. Hell no, dude. It's going to be awesome. Hey, if you're going to be at that fish show, hit me up. I always like <laughs> meeting people. Yeah. Always do that. Dude. I socialize with anybody who meets me Cam, anywhere. At the, Don't let at me the know. draft in Montreal, people text and so. like, they're like, hey, where you at? Where you? I like that you're like that. Because yes. you know I am. I know. If I leave my house, I, wasn't I will like talk that. to everybody. I wasn't like that before. You actually have kind of had that of influence. Of course. I, I bring the best out of everybody. Let's be <laughs> honest. Here. I really do. Not, not of myself, mm-hmm. but everybody else. Yeah. It makes me feel good to do that. So when do you start selfish. putting the fall uh, oh. decorations out? Because we're going to talk about this on our fall extravaganza that we're having probably on the next episode. Uh, well, when you start lot, decorating, lot, people have Halloween shit out right now, and it's way too early. I'm going to uh, set the uh, neighborhood uh, a little like a note on uh, the St. Albans like a uh, fan page or mm-hmm, whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yes. it's not called that. But oh, yeah, what's it yeah. called? It's yeah, like yeah. the community page. Yeah, community yeah. page. I'm going to be like, <laughs> all y'all. I'm gonna make some chili. I'm gonna make some. Oh, you're gonna invite them I'm all over. Make, and I want the kids coming. I'm gonna make it scary as shit. Don't it's let the kids. Scary. Hey, don't let your kids go inside. Don't. I'm go just in my telling house. you right now. Don't let the kids go don't, inside. You don't know what he's got going on. Over don't there. open drawers in my house. <laughs> don't do it. But stay outside, and I'll hook all y'all up with candy. I'm gonna make chili. When do you do this, though? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the neighborhood like we're all gonna bring something different and. Like maybe just go in. Is my, it like a chili cook-off? Well, we just invite the neighborhood because it's like they'll do like a little thing at the clubhouse where they go, they just go trunk or treating, which is so dumb. So like they go to one car and the next car, and I know it's cute and it's safe, but it's so creepy out there. Yeah, we all know what a trunk or treat is. Hey, and everybody's like got the St. Albans thing. No, I know. No, it's not. That's you. No, I'm saying as a kid yeah, though. Yeah. Like, I, don't you? I remember going like oh, yeah, it's Halloween. You decorate like, your trunk, and I we go up these hills, and sometimes they'd be home, and sometimes they wouldn't. But mm-hmm. we go, and my dad would leave leave us there and scare us and shit. Yeah. And these creepy sort of it. Our our sort of is beautiful, but it's creepy. And everybody has what side by side. What do you mean side. it's creepy? Well, there's woods, and you're way out in the middle of nowhere. And the houses sometimes look like creepy castles in but the distance. But it's very like there's coyotes established. Like a, oh, it's beautiful. Like, like I mean, it's a subdivision. It's yeah. not very scary. But, but but subdivisions are. It's not. It's dark at places. Okay. It's, I haven't it's, been there. You can there see the at stars. Nighttime. You can see the moon. Night. It's scary. Yeah. Dude. It well, really we'll, is. We'll come over for that. I told. I invite Andy over all the time. Like I, I can hey, provide things for hey, Andy. He a, can't provide hey, anything. A for buddy me. of mine is just. Um, Applied, I guess, or whatever. He's in the process, and he's joining St. Albans. Oh, so really? I'm going to hook you up with him, and, and well, give him, tell him that I did it, so I get like a thing on it. 
Oh, really? Yeah, dude. I can't tell this guy that. Why? I don't think he would do that. No, I don't. No, maybe he would. I know a couple of big boys. Is it John <laughs> Davison? <laughs> yeah. I already talked to the. No, he's already in. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the process, whatever. Yeah, no, he's in. Yeah, yeah. I talked to the pro show. Okay. St. Albans. Yeah. yeah. John Davison. Yeah. Like, I can't wait. Yeah. So he's talking about me, and John was awesome as usual. I love that guy. Mm-hmm. We had him on, dude. So yeah, he's out there. I got a lot of people coming yeah. out there, baby. Yeah. yeah. That's what you do. Because it's beautiful. There's no waiting in line. All, so, like, Timmy Peel and all those guys are at. Meadow, so at Meadowbrook. Meadowbrook. But, but it, fuck, on the weekends, man, it's hard to get a tea time What would there. it cost me to join? I think 20 grand. I thought it was seven grand. It's up now. But it was seven grand. I know. We got it at seven oh, I can get that deal, though, right? I mean, come on. I don't know how that works. I haven't even tried to do anything there, Andy, to be like, hey, give me. I don't. Kate and I are just paying. Like, the problem is it's just a distance to go, like, hang out. It's, you're not going to go there for dinner and stuff like it's, that. The dinner, know? the food's fucking awesome. No, I know. But I'm saying you're not going to drive uh, all the way out there, have cocktails. Yeah, I'll be like, get out here. Let's go have cocktails. What are you talking about? Like, get out here. Let's go. Uber out here. I'll take care of you. I don't mm. give a shit. Like, yeah. You come out, man. I'll, yeah, dude. That's Listen, you want. I don't like being. Watch a game there I don't shit. like being in Ubers for more smoke, than like 10 smoke minutes. cigars. Chill oh, yeah. out. I know. You, listen, well, who's the dude? Who's the dude oh, sending us cigars? And Cam won't share these damn cigars. <coughs> Take them. I don't smoke cigars, man. And I love cigars. I don't smoke them. I'll, I'll get like hung over. That's what happens. I'll get hung over. I dude, I'll drink. I told you, I'll drink forty beer and a bottle of wine. I told you, and won't be Mother's over. Day, I had a Bloody Mary and a cigar, and I was like throwing up. It's a cigar. I'll crush. I'll crush whatever booze. But if I smoke a I goddamn a cigar, Bloody Mary and a cigar, and Mother I felt like fucker. I just had fifteen shots of like Jaeger, <laughs> Fireball or something. Damn, I know, man. So you got it. So listen, I don't go cheap on the cigars now. I get them very oh, mild yeah. and uh, very mild. So they're not they're not too strong. And I get the short ones now. I'm looking for a video game system. I may get my get kids PS5. one for uh, get PS Five for uh, Christmas this year. Get PS Five, dude. It's fucking badass. I'm setting up my studio. In Can I get NHL 94? I told you I painted my studio all black, Andy. I told you it's going to be scary as fuck. I can't wait. Yoink. Dude, first of all, we had a meeting the other day with a guy. Cam's got his, you know, like uh, back in the day, if you ever watch like Channel 9 or something, I, I, or like, like, like PBS. You would watch PBS. No, I, I don't know. Like they would always have like the person doing sign language in the little circle, or whatever, and it's all black behind them. That's what Cam looked like on the Zoom meeting. Yeah, I painted my, I, I so took all you home. saw was his face. I know. It looked creepy. <laughs> this guy. Well, I got all my, my devil stuff. I got the blue stuff. It's going to look with a cool ba- black backdrop. I'm going to get Pennywise a clown. People are trying to paint me Pennywise a clown. I want to get a couple scary ass things that scared me when I was a kid. Fucking Pennywise, baby. Mm. What's up? Now I'm going to stare at Pennywise like, Pennywise, what are you do? the clown? I'm like, what are you going to do now? I'll bag you up too. Don't and it's like a respect that. thing. It's a respect thing when I look at him. Listen, but we appreciate Tom Gallardi for coming on with us, man, for sure. Yep. Anytime you get an owner like that to come on and and uh, and give us some time and, you know, and talk about things that probably he's not used to, like, discussing all the time, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a, it's Dude, a he's, he's different cool. type of interview. Owners don't come on for an hour and do, do podcasts like this. So it's good to have the big dicks on, you know. <clears throat> okay, so here. What are you doing? Jesus. Here's the video of when the kid did close the gate. Caden. Look at it. It's open right here. Close the gate. Oh, you're an idiot. Oh. Oh, that was dumb. Yeah, that's close dumb. Close the gate. I get it. That's dumb. You know, you know what yeah. I mean? It just yeah, kind of bothers me. So there's the uh, bruise that he's got. Oh, that's gnarly looking. Yeah. Well, lucky that it wasn't more uh, dangerous. My Sore neck. Yeah, you probably can't move. Probably. So, anyway. <coughs> All right. The Camster Podcast brought to you by Harry. You'd Club. be out four to six months, Sandy. Never missed a game. You never played a game. Do you know one time I tripped over a, cr- a, uh, a uh, iron, like an ironing board, mm-hmm. and my toenail f- popped off? Oh, oh, my God. Played that yeah. night. And again. Played that night. You're, you're, you're a fucking warrior. <laughs> okay. You're a fucking warrior. All these guys in Redwater, fucking Alberta, and Fucking shit kicker Saskatchewan are like, God, Andy, you're tougher than dogs. Well, that's shit. why we relate to each other. I know. That's why they that's why they don't That's why I love all that's y'all. That's why all the messages I get <laughs> <laughs> Love all y'all. They're like, Andy's so goddamn tough, Cam. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Yeah. They're like, you need to toughen up, Cam. I'm like, I know. I mm-hmm. gotta be like Andy. Yeah. Hair Club and Hair Club dot com. Eight hundred two seven nine seven eight seven eight hair club dot com slash cam and strict cam. That's where you go. Yeah, babe. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. That's where you go. Yeah, we, we uh, heard you the first time. Carshield and Carshield.com, 800-857-2481. Mention that promo code CAM. 
which is very embarrassing, but sometimes Easy. you just got to do what you got to do, man. It's, it's for business. It saves you money, and uh, we've got no issue with that. Bellman and Bellman.com, Danny boy. Yeah, Danny, what up? Say hi to Danny, will you? What up, Danny? Say hi to Dale. What's up, Dyke? Everybody over there in Troy, Missouri, man. If anybody's looking for a new car, a used car, pre-owned, whatever it is, you go out there to Troy and you get it done, man. They take care of you like no other, and there's no what. Can Swinging my fucking dick. Mm-hmm. Because those guys do what? Like, they I mean, swing the dick around. Mm-hmm. Tell, but like, tell you're not, your wife yeah, that. Exactly. It's not a situation. That they're uh, yeah. tougher than you. Oh, God. Like, oh, fuck. Imagine. Hey, but, 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 I just bite your kid. I just bite can in my heart's game. What? Mm. What? I just bite just, can I can I look at the cars, please? Thank you, sir. They got the uh, Buick GMC. I'm looking at the Denali. I have been for quite some time. Cam's looking at that Buick Enclave, the frosted white with tan interior. Yeah. Man, I'll take one. Captain of seats. Nothing wrong with that. I'll take one. Of right across the street, Cam. It's just right across the street. Yeah. You've got the uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. So how convenient is that? Very convenient, Andy. Mm-hmm. It's very convenient. So, and I like a lot of the Jeeps. I like all of them. Chrysler. The Dodge. You like you were looking at a Dodge truck at one point in time. A Ram, maybe? Yeah, like the ones on Yellowstone are kind of cool, you know. Mm-hmm. The are, are, are they driving Rams over there on Yellowstone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dooley's. Black Dooley's. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't need a Dooley. Are the nuts hanging from the back of it? Yeah, the fucking nut sacks. <laughs> hey, if you're in Missouri, hey, I'm telling all y'all, you got the big old boys that drive them big trucks with the pipes hanging out the back. Yeah. And they got the nut sack flowing in the wind in the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's not I'm going to put a nut sack on, on oh, your Volvo. No, you're not. I'll never even know. That'd be funny. <laughs> dude, don't you dare do that. If you did that and I had no idea, dude, that'd be terrible. No, yeah. Okay. Uh, so check that out. Go to Bellman and Bellman.com. Go there today and say hi to Danny Boy. Tell him the Camus Podcast sent you. But you don't have to to be treated like gold. They treat everybody like gold over there. Uh, Waggle Golf. I'm thinking about uh, hitting some balls today. I'll, yeah. have, I'll be dressed to the nines. St. Louis Country Club. People will know. <laughs> and they're like, damn, where'd you get that shirt? We got we to gotta get Andy out to our club. How can we convince Andy to come to our club? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Well, listen, I'll get in anywhere when I'm wearing Waggle Golf. Honestly, it just gives you that much more credibility. They're like, come on in. You won't embarrass us wearing that. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. You know that. Well, you just look good, but you can still suck. Say hi to Travis Baker. What's up, Trav? And, and, and I don't like how you talk to him on the meeting, but... What did I call him again? A cake eater? Yeah, I didn't like from that. He's from Minnesota. I didn't like that. Minnesota. Waggle Golf. They've got such a great selection, and they've got new apparel that's out right now. Have you seen the new stuff? Dude, I need some more stuff. Yeah, I know. I, think, I know. Because I'm, like, some. wearing it out. I know. This you is know. great Christmas uh, presents, by the way, when we get there. I know. But it's great now, because there's still plenty of golf left. <laughs> Depending on where you're at, you can probably golf for a couple more months, right? Oh God, yeah, easy. You can golf. You can golf here in December. You golf anytime you want if it's Mm -hmm. nice. Does the course stay open all year round? Yeah. If it's nice, they're gonna open it up. I'll be out there, dude. Yeah, Andy. (laughs) I'll be out there. Everybody be waiting for you. (laughs) I know they will. Like, oh, Andy's here. I'll be out there. I'll be coming soon. Waggle Golf, man. Get your waggle on dot com. That's the website. Go there and go there today. Sparks Hockey, man. Get that. Skate sharpener and do it today. It's convenient, accurate, and consistent. It's super easy to use. It's a press of a button. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. Honestly, this is and these people out there who try to tell me, oh, they're they're they're, they're going to do this to your radius of your skate and whatever. Cam, what? I saw a video the other day. Patrick Kane using his Spark skate sharpener, yeah. and convenient. do you know this is the preferred skate sharpener in twenty five NHL dressing rooms right now. Damn. Dang, and somebody's going to tell me that it's going to, like, ruin your skin. Like, what? You know what? No, the dipshit at the counter at the, yeah, the, the exactly. place with the, the 12-year-old yeah. f- sharpen, cross-grinding your skates. Oh, my God. I know. Robots are taking over the it's society. It's so anyway. easy to use. Just all y'all know. So easy to set up. Elevate your performance. Skating is the most important aspect of hockey camp. If you can't skate, what will happen if you have a bad edge? You'll look like you. <laughs> you don't want that. Purchase directly at sparkshockey.com and do it today. S-P-A-R-X. That's how you spell it. Sparkshockey.com. They'll ship it on the same day. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. It's going to save you more money than you're going to save on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Okay? So do it today. Hey, get those hats, by the way, over there from Victor Hockey. Our boy Adam coming through. Victorhockey.com. Follow him on all his social media as well. Twitter, Instagram, at Victor Hockey USA. So check all that out. Go to camastrick.com today and order your hat. And uh, we'll ship it out to you right Badass away. Hats. 
badass hats. So check those out. Camandstrick.com, especially if you missed an episode as well. All right, this has been episode number 201 with Tom Gallardi. <clears throat> Damn right. Not the first billionaire to join the show, but Ooh. certainly a memorable interview, man. We love talking to Tom. Good yep. stuff with him. We like talking to owners. Absolutely. All right, so for everybody affiliated with the Cam and Strick podcast, again, follow us everywhere, YouTube, Google Play, all our social medias, and uh, crush that like button and leave us a review. Let us know what you think. And my uh, DMs are always open. Yeah, mine too. Send me a message. See you, dudes. Love well. all y'all. Yeah. See hey. you guys. <laughs>